All right, Denny, you there? Okay, hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm not doing too bad. And yourself, Denny? Yeah, I'm doing okay. Had a good Christmas. Or well, Christmas Eve, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah, it's Christmas Eve here too. Hope everyone uh, out there is having a good Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, we, yeah, well, welcome, welcome everyone, uh, back to CPL. Uh, we're gonna just do some casting. It will be CPL season six preseason week two group forty two. Okay, you got that correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a nice. that's a mouthful, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to have, uh, I think it's Mr. Chill, Neon Sword, D-Beauty, uh, and Doglift. And, of course, Crazy, right? Those those are the players. Crazy and uh, Neon Sword as well, did we say? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mentioned them. Yeah. Yeah, all right, uh, okay. let's, uh, let's get into it. The first map will be Eclipse. Haven't uh, watched much Brood War games lately, actually, so this is be very refreshing for me. Okay, spawning in the top right corner, we have Neon Sword, the Terran player. Uh, one sec, man. Just oh, gotta get, get rid of the. Yeah, just gotta get rid of the um, the the replay thing. Uh, that's yeah, that's okay. Shoot. Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry. There go ahead. Go. Yeah. Go. All right. So top top right corner, Neon Sword, a purple Terran, and in the bottom left we have Proxy Drop Bear or Chill in the blue Protoss. So this being Eclipse, what do you, is Chill going to do our classic gas deal every time? Uh, I mean, <laughs> it remains to be seen. Uh, Eclipse is, I don't know, Eclipse is kind of weird um, in the sense that, uh, I mean, you can get your natural pretty easy from both races, but besides that, you know, the third's a little harder to to, to take, right? Um, so yeah, we, we could see something weird coming out of uh, Chill. Mm-hmm. It looks like he's just gonna do everything normal though. He has told me that he doesn't really like doing the gas still that often anymore. So doesn't look like he's gonna do anything like that. Oh. Uh, looks like Neon Sword is opting to try to uh, wall off. You can see he's building a supply depot at his choke. Mm. Eclipse one of those difficult maps though. You cannot actually wall on this map. Um, not even your ramp, not even your natural as Terran players. So. He's just having to build a little bit of SimCity, make a little bit of choke, which is great. But it's not a complete wall, just to let everyone know. Well, you can wall enough. If you build enough depots, essentially you'll get a wall up. <laughs> I guess if you, yeah, if you want to go crazy with the amount of depots, you can wall. But there, there's a little bit of a gap right there below the supply depot. Right, right, for sure. Uh... I, I I don't really favor like a wall though on on these kind of positions because it really does mess up you know like the flow of your units in a later yeah. game right obviously right and especially if uh, Neon goes for the second depot above the racks here it's really annoying for those tanks to have to walk all the way around right for sure um, so yeah we see Chill he's going for completely standard build right it looks like it's going to be gate core um, the, the only thing I I'm kind of like miffed about is like he hasn't sent a scout yet you know usually it's like they do core scout right with this build but chill has not scouted at all so yeah just trying to get maximize the amount of minerals he gets i guess yeah but denny is it worth it you know like not knowing what your opponent is going I mean, your opponent could be building I two, would two barracks say right? <laughs> on eclipse it's okay on eclipse because the rush distance is quite far but if this was a bbs i mean chill would have already lost but you can't really always play around that kind of stuff, so he's going for that maximum amount of minerals first of all. But he's standing a scout now, so... Yep, oh, for sure. And uh, if you go back to the Terran space, it looks like yeah, he uh, he has done that depot above <laughs> the barracks. So it's going to be really, really weird like for his units to come out, right? Yeah, either Neon Sword knows something that I don't, or he just didn't realize you can't completely wall this map. But it didn't really turn out to be that big a deal because of the... Um, no zealot at the start. And we see Chill actually going for his proxy robo. This is the favorite on his favorite strategy on this map, actually. If uh, Neon Sword is paying attention, I we should be able to see 
the Nexus timing if he sends another scout soon, hopefully. Yeah, um, like, so far, like, what Neon saw was completely standard from the Protoss, right? Uh, yeah. You know, his SCV died before, you know, he could really uh, get more intel. That would lead him to think that there's some kind of proxy. But, yeah, of course, there is a proxy. And you're right on the money. It is a robotics facility. He didn't see the third pylon, but his scout actually ended up dying quite early. So he should still be a little bit suspicious. I would love to see Neonso send another scout. I would be very concerned if I was a Terran player right now. Right, for sure. And uh, you can see that goon <laughs> bugging out a bit on the bridge. I'm trying to get shots, right? Actually, Neonso getting to cut a marine just because of the wall as well. So I guess that also helped. He made zero marines at the start of the game, just going straight for the tank. Yeah, for sure. Um, that that actually helps greatly. And I just like want to show you, like Neon Zerg, uh, Neon Sword, sorry, Zerg, sorry, Zerg. Um, Neon Sword, yeah, he has gone for an engineering base. So I mean, I think that's kind of like a response to him not getting like uh, more info. So he's like, oh, I'm just gonna hedge my bets and get an engineering base, right? Yeah, and we'll try to see where he puts his first turrets up here if he wants to. If he's thinking about DT or if he's thinking about Robo, <laughs> he right. can try to cover both, but it's not going to be 100% efficient if you go for one or the other. Right, yeah, and I just want to like uh, the point out, uh, it is going to be Re Reaver, right? If you look at the chill base, yeah. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. there's the robotic su uh, support bay. Shuttle already on the way. So in, I really in love this facility's positioning up the top here. Oh, this right. makes it harder for the turn to scan. Right, for sure. Um, but, you know, look at the state of the game. I mean, this can either go, like, two ways. Because Neon Sword, he can defend this. Like, he did go Siege first and turrets, right? So he, he has potential to defend this, right? So and It like, looks like Neon Sword thinks this is DT. If we if he knew it was Reaver, we'd be seeing turrets going on the main. But just one of the natural. Yeah, this is a classic, like, anti-DT style, like, turret placement, yeah. right? Yeah, if it was Reaver, he would have him on the outside ring. So, um, you know, just a quick pointer. Uh, the rule of thumb is that if it's DT, usually you want, like, the tourist to be hugging your buildings, or, you know, right? If it's, like, yeah. Reaver, then you want him, like, a ring on the outside, right? Okay, here we see. Here the we shuttle go. going in now. Okay, you guys are in for a treat because Chill's shuttle micro has been excellent as of late. Okay. He's gonna fly it in, in between the SUV's path if he was to run away, which is really nice. Okay, takes the first shot there, but he's able to get one SUV. We'll see if he drops the goon here. There we go. Should be able to take out that tank, no problem. And get the turret as well. Oh, he should really get that turret so that he can get the Reaver out. That's a lot of SUV killed. Okay, I would say at this moment, Chill is slightly ahead, but Neo Sword is not doing too badly either. Yeah, considering that his turret was like not even done by the time, like you just finished as the like, shuttle came in, like that could have gone a lot worse, a lot worse for Neon Zerg. Yeah. So, um, sword. I don't I know think... why I keep calling him Neon Zerg, man. Sorry about that. It's because of Eon Zerg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like subconscious or something. Okay, if we want to see. The next Reaver do no damage, you should be able to see a second turret going up on the main. There we go. And another turret should be going up near the ramp where he's sieged his tank so that that doesn't get taken out easily. Yeah, definitely. Like, there's, um, Protoss can do some busts, you know, if you're not, if you're not covering your, um, your front as well with turrets, right? But, uh, looks like Chill isn't really planning to go on a bus. So he just. You know, he's just uh, getting his, his tech, right? He's already got Stargate going. Yeah, getting going. his gateways, preparing for a third as well. Right, yeah. Oh, it's Stargate tech. So this looks like it's going to be carriers, and it does get scanned. So it does look like Chiu is preparing for carriers. He could, he could still switch it to Arbiters, depending on what Neon Sword is really thinking about the stage. Right. All that thought. Okay, we see uh, a shuttle again coming in at the natural. Of Neon Sword, let's see what he can get done. Oh, really nice dodging the turret there. Okay, drops the Groom first to take the tank shots. Gets a couple of SUVs there. Good reaction by a Neon Sword though, you know, like yeah. pulling the SUVs away. Oh, same thing happening in the main, pulling them away. 
Great tire positioning. This reaver is about to get one shot and the shuttle goes down. Really greedy play from Chu. Oh, uncharacteristic of him to lose the shuttle very early on. Yeah, um, I'm, I don't know, man. That was, that was obviously not worth it. The second uh, reaver and dragoon shuttle, that's a lot of investment for, you know, not a lot of damage done. And, uh, if you look at a uh, neon sword he is doing he's gearing up for some kind of timing push off off two bases right you can see he's got like four factories already uh so th this is actually strong gets what chill's doing because yeah you're completely correct danny he is going like carriers right and uh, no third yeah. so like a timing come out of um neon sword could end the game if chill's not careful right uh, and I'd love to see Neo Sword throw down another scan just to check for the carrier tech to see if it's arbiter or carriers but it seems like he hasn't quite done that yet, but he is going to push out with his forward factory timing right now. We'll see if he puts down a CC at the same time, or if he just wants to go for a push. Right, yeah. yeah. You can see back at Chill's base, he's throwing down a ton, a ton of like desperation gateways, because he knows what's coming. Like he, the Reaver might have done no damage to second one, but it at least gave him like like vision of what's coming, right? In which it's... <laughs> It appears to be some kind of push, but if, if Neon wants to end the game, he's got to go now. He's got to go now before the gates are warped in, right? Okay, it looks like he's going out. Okay, that scan is going down on the ramp. Really good buying of time by Chu here, making him sieged. Okay, he shouldn't be losing goons like that, though. Just bleeding a couple goons as he go across. Okay, we see additional factories going down for Neon, so, so he's not interested in getting a third base at all. He wants to end the game really quickly here. Yeah, he's committed. His plus one's almost done as well. Uh, let's see what Chill has. Ooh, he always has a handful of Dragoons and Zealots. I cannot be bleeding like Zealots like this. You see that? He cannot be bleeding units like that. Oh, yeah. He doesn't have the Reaver for his defense as well, because he did lose it. And he just has the one Observer that just got taken out over the army. So Chill is really in a precarious situation here. He doesn't know where the Aeterans army is. He could be walking around, and his gateway count is not that great either. Right, and it, it's like he, he, I think he's like abandoned his choice of carriers. You can kind of see like he's hes making units, right? Not carriers like out of his single star. Yeah. 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 He didn't even make a second star get actually. He saw the push coming and he just added more gateways, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Um, look at this. It's a overwhelming and it's, he's got plus one on, on the Terran um, army now for Neon Sword. And uh, you all know like Terran upgrades are so good. They're so good, man. Especially for Mac, yeah. best upgrades. Right? Okay, we should be seeing more vultures coming out now as sell it speeds is done as well. He also opting to slowly crawl up to Chill's natural here, taking a really nice and slow, not getting caught out of position. Okay, this is not a fight that Chill wants to take, but he's gonna go for it anyway. Shadow's gonna come in with the Zella bombs. And it's not really going to get too many tanks. It's going to get a couple here. That was a good unsiege. If, if the tanks had yeah. fired, they would have killed a ton of his own units. Um, so that was a Excellent good save. Un -siege. Uh, you can see a lot of his uh, units are low health. And we can see Neon Sword taking his third CC while he's pushing as a well. really excellent move. Finally scouts that robotics facility. <laughs> Knows where it's <laughs> coming. <the> CC. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Chill's going for a six. Uh, well, actually, like five o'clock base. A little bit of a ninja hidden base. Oh yeah. It's not really a place that's gonna get scattered. Soon. And excellent zealot bomb coming through, taking out a lot of the tanks. Neoso really didn't have a lot of vultures to fight properly there, and ends up losing about eight to ten tanks there. So this is gonna slow down his push. Probably gonna back off and try to secure his third instead. Right. Uh, he. He really needed more vultures to buffer, and like maybe like a couple of Goliaths to snipe down the shuttle, right? Yeah. But is Chill overextending here? He just lost like his whole army, basically, trying to kill a couple of tanks. I mean, I felt like he okay, had he so did the damage he needed to, right? Mhm. Mm the tank out is low, but Chill does hold on because that was a push that could have killed the Protoss outright. Right. So Neon's are actually opting to back off here, secure his third, probably get a second armory. Throw up a facility, go for more upgrades as well. Yeah. And um, during that time, actually, that Chill has bought, Chill is going to get his second gate, uh, second Stargate, sorry, and start taking up the carriers. 
Neon Sword instantly scans and sees it though. Like that's really good from Neon Sword. Like he, mm -hmm. he saw it, right? So I would actually love to see Neon Sword take another base here. Just because he knows if Chiu is spending money on the carrier tech, he knows he's not gonna have that greater than Mami. And you need the extra gas if you want to go tank Goliath. You really need extra gas. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Looks like this Ninja Expo actually turns out pretty great for Chill. It's not really going to be scattered at all. Yeah, it's going to pay off for sure. Uh, sure. I I like um I like Neon Sword's follow up though. You can see he's getting his facility. He's getting second armor. He's laying down more factories. Right. He's he's doing what he needs to to get back in the game. Yeah, we should be seeing a second Ooh. opportunity here for Neon Sword to kill chill before he gets to the critical amount of carriers so he is laying down his extra factories going down now right we'll see if he elects to come out sooner or if he's going to wait for the upgrades to finish first yeah in tvp it really is a game of uh for the turn anyway a game of hitting hitting your your timings right like it's a it's a series of timings that you have which you can like try to win the game at and uh one of the timings is exactly what you were talking about, the upgrade timing, right? So he might wait for 2-1 and then have like an almost near-maxed army, right? To move out. He might move out at 150 even, right? Depending on seeing what the army Chill has. Yeah, and Chill has really forced the clock on this game because he's going to the carrier tech. So Neon's are really feeling the pressure right now. Yeah. He is electing to continue to amass vultures, which does give him the mag control, but he is going to need Goliaths eventually. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, okay, one thing I can say about Neon Sword is that he's got to get the Iron Thrusters upgrade. You know, the Vulture speed upgrade. Is Vulture oh yeah, speed we yet? haven't seen the Vulture speed. Yeah, it's, it's 15 minutes that, in the that game. That would have been useful during his push for the Vultures to reinforce quickly as well. Right. Okay. Look, look, it seems like Chill's gonna try to make something happen right here. Conazal's coming in, but getting rebuffed completely. Nice little pullback for Chill. After realizing that he's not really going to do anything here, he should really not try anything here. This is not a position that you want to fight in, especially with such a low amount of units. Yeah, uh, like one like one thing I can say though, it's okay. It's nice. It's nice that Chill is taking a fourth. But if you look at the supplies, Neon Sword is up on supplies against um, Chill, and you know when the Terran is up on supplies, they're usually ahead. Yeah. Okay. Chill's Ninja Expo does get scouted here with the scan. And funnily enough, Neon Sword actually going for EMP. I don't know if he thinks this is Arbiter Tech or not, but EMP does help somewhat against carriers, I guess. You can EMP the clump of carriers and then try to get your Goliaths to pick them off. Yeah, uh, I mean, EMP is definitely is a good upgrade, even against carriers. Like, the EMP spell can literally do, what, like, like thousands of damage in terms of shield damage, right? In one in one hit to oh, yeah. Kodos, so... I mean, but it, you just don't need as many, like, um, science vessels in, against carriers as, as you would in the... against um, carriers, right? And looks like Chill is taking his first uh, three carriers out. Well, he does have four. The last one's just back at his base. And the, when you do go carriers, four is the number where when the carriers start getting, like... Uh, like showing some potential right like you know before that yeah. you have like two carriers Terran army can just like basically ignore the damage right honestly two carriers is worse than zero <laughs> yeah <laughs> three three is okay but four is really where you can start to express yourself and then six is the number the money number that you want to get to right looks like we but have actually Q is going to be able to take out all these tanks for free because Neo Sword actually didn't make any Goliaths at all he must have thought that this was not a carrier game, even though he scanned the fleet beacon. Yeah, I'm really, really surprised. Like, he's just queuing up Goliaths now out of his factory. He's gonna lose all the siege tanks to Chill's carriers. This is a huge reverse. I would have said that this he was actually. Been... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was saying like, like, I thought that this was a game for Neon Sword because you know how he's up on supplies, he did a lot of damage, right, and all that. But this changes everything, right? He just lost all his tanks. Yeah. His upgrades were going, his 2-1 is already finished, and this fight would have looked very different if all of those vultures were Goliaths instead. 
he would have taken the game. But it looks like he's going to push back the carries now, and he might be able to save the third. He's not going to lose the CC, but he's losing a couple of SCVs to these two goons here. Yeah. He's also killing um, Chill's uh, like ninja expo, by the way. Right. Oh, I missed that completely. This is a really nice move from Neon Sword. Yeah, but I don't think he's going to get the carries are on the way already. Okay, how many carries are we at now? We have four here, two more should be coming soon. There's one here. Okay, the sixth one is making. So he is going to be able to save the Nexus here. But he did lose a lot of economy during that as well. Right, yeah, both, both of these players' economies are looking really bad. Chills, mine out in the main, mine out in the natural. He had his probe line completely evaporated at the 5, right? But, you know, Neon Sword's not looking that much better. He's mined out the main. He's on fumes at the natural. He only really has the third that he's really mining healthily from. Actually, looking at this, how are we doing both of these players right now? Okay, so we still had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 gateways for Chill. And he's still producing extra carriers. Neon Sword is now building Goliath. I think this game still can go for Neon Sword, even though she was getting to that scary, scary six carrier count. Yeah, um, g given given Neon Sword's like even with his depleted amount of like resources left, he's got maybe one more push left in him that he that he can you know, max out an army to fight Chill. But after that, I'd say the Protoss is solidly ahead. Yeah, especially. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Chill's getting another base actually, right, right now. So if that gets up, uh, up in mining, Chill's gonna win for sure. Yeah, Neon Sword is actually building a CC in the 12 core position, but we'll see if he's actually able to establish that because these carriers are coming in now. Yeah, he's got a cycle like Goliath. Yeah. yeah, he's going to get cancelled very easily. Without the extra bases, Terran is in a very, very bad position, but he does have one more push in him when the 3 2 finishes. Right. Good micro. You wanna? I don't know uh, why he's trying to fight the interceptors. When the, when the carriers are by themselves, you wanna just ta like stutter forward and target the carriers. But when they have support, yeah, then you wanna fight the interceptors. So a little bit of a mistake from the onslaught right there. Could have definitely have focused down like some carriers. And some carriers are pretty like low on HP right now. So Neosword is about to lose his natural minerals as well. So he can either elect to float his CC over to a new base, which would probably be the best decision here. He's building one at the 12 o'clock, another one. Okay, yeah. He's just gonna build a new one. And uh, just in case you're wondering what Chill is doing, like how come he's, he can, he's like attacking his own units and like having his interceptors come out like that? Um, it's called leashing. It's to it's to maximize the interceptor range because you know Blizzard is really but well you know hold that thought. Chill flies over a ton of glass, lose one carrier, gets all the carriers EMP. This is huge. That was like two thousand damage on those carriers yeah, just I mean, from one EMP. And he lost that carrier as well, like one carrier, right? Yeah. Okay. We'll see if Chill is able to hold here. His Templars are out, but oh, okay, one gets taken out before he can even storm. Really great defense matrix coming out here, but if Neosaur is going to attack into cannons, the Goliaths are going to get eaten up, so he needs to pull them back just a little bit. Another carrier going down. Oh, that carrier dying sound. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> it's good oh, for Terran. If, if you're the Terran, yeah. <laughs> Another don't carrier. You don't get to hear it very often, because, you know, carriers don't very often die. Looks like Chill, he has just enough. He is going to save this base, and that's so crucial. That's so crucial. Right? Yeah, saving the base, doesn't lose the Nexus, and he actually trades army, but he gets to keep a decent carry can. He's down to three now. Let's see if he's remaking. He has a fourth one ready, he's but he's not currently remaking any carriers. He's playing with fire again. See, Neon, like, sword. If he just scanned, if he saw the carriers were isolated with no ground army, he could have ran forward. He could have killed another carrier. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, a little bit of a mistake from uh, Neon Sword there. Okay, if Terrence, uh, if Neon Sword sorry, is able to establish the 12 o'clock base, I think it's going to be game for Neon Sword right now. Because Chill's gateway count is still low. His economy is not looking that great. He's 
mining on three bases now, but his probe count is quite low. Yeah, um, at this stage of the game, oh, another carrier gets picked off. Huge. Really excellent job. Now we have a critical mass of Goliaths, and they have plus three attacks, so it plus is three, really, really two. difficult for Chill to fight this. Right. His Grand Army only has plus one, it's, and um, the air weapons plus two. Oh no. Oh, Cyanic Storm wasn't upgraded yet. It's starting just now in the Templar archives. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, Templars are a great complement to the carrier army. Like, they, they're just so effective against those Goliaths with those storms. Oh yeah. Okay. If we want to see Cho take this game, we need a miracle amount of micro here. I would actually love to see Cho take his carriers in between these ramp areas rather than just going face forward. Just so he can play around with the vision, but it looks like he's going to attack right. it. It doesn't look like it's going to be upper the worst, ramp. great attack. Upper ramp into, into yeah, entrenched ramp. Terran. This is not the attack we were looking for. Okay, the interceptors are all going to die here with the amount of characterized. And it and is chill, GG. GG is out. Chill. Whew. Okay. Interesting game, that one. Yeah, that was really back and forth. Like, I, I think I think at both points, both players could have won. Oh yeah. With better control, I think Chu could have definitely taken this game. With his Reavers and his Carriers. Right. But I, I also kind of feel like um, Neon Sword, he kind of he kind of did the counter build, you know, since he was going for a two base push in the first place. And then Chu was going two base carrier, right? The two base yeah. carrier is kind of like countered by it, right? I think that Chill did a really excellent job holding off that very first attack. Um, he didn't have a lot of units, but he was able to get a really nice zealot bomb on top of the tanks and take out like eight or ten tanks in that one fight, which gave him the time to get the carriers out, but he wasn't able to play out the game well enough after that one. Yeah, I mean, we, we uh, yeah, I yeah, I have to give kudos to, to Chill as well. You know, like again, he, he was playing with the build that was countered by the Terran's build, but he still managed to hang on for so long, right? So definitely kudos to him. And uh, yeah. it was definitely because of those nice uh, Zella bombs and uh, taking nice fights in the middle of the map. Okay, we're getting the second game here of today. Okay, and in the top right we have Proxy Drop Bear Chill. That's the blue portals. And in the bottom left, we have the green Terran, Crazy. Yeah, so we another Hello, Terran. TVP. Yeah, another yeah. TVP. That's what I was about to say. Another TVP. Um, this position, actually, Chill might opt to go for the gas steel because of their spawn positions. It is a little bit more favorable on his side. Oh, um, it's because of the distance, right? The distance is a little yeah. bit closer, right? Yes. Uh, due to the, the geyser position. But, uh, well, what is it? It's an, is it like eight, uh, eight, eight or nine? Like pylon scouts? Are we going to do that, right? Yeah. And it looks like he's not going to go for any of those shenanigans. Crazy's going to be able to have a peaceful early start. Yeah. Um, crazy, you know, he looks like he's going pretty standard as well, right? Not nothing. I mean, yeah, nothing crazy. He would have, he would have, he would have sent on the SCV already. But if it was going to be like BBS or something like that, right? Have you been laddering lately, Shroom? As well? Oh, I, I haven't been playing StarCraft actually uh, that much lately, <laughs> to be honest. No? <laughs> yeah, kind of the same as you. After you hit 1900, you just stop, right? <laughs> no, no, I never, I never hit 1900. Well, okay, I, I've, I have one account which is like five wins. That's like 1900, 1900 or something. But um, yeah, that still counts. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. A lot of people would beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> just don't show him the game count to say I'm a 1900 Terran. Uh, well, like more, more realistically, I, I'm, I'm 1800 to 1900, right? Like I've, I've got 1800 accounts with a lot of games on it, right? So. Um, yeah, okay, yes, we, we see crazy uh, scouting. Uh, I think that was, it says 14 supply, but that was probably the 13th one that came out, and you know, that's completely standard in TVP. Yep. Again, chill, like, yeah. you know, he's going for an eco, you know, like, he hasn't scouted yet, even though, like, his core's not, it's halfway done. 
So it looks like he waits until the first goon is starting and then he sends his program. I mean, uh, but actually, last time the reason he sent his probe out was for the proxy robo, so we'll see if he wants to do that again. And it's even better for him this time because his proxy robo location on that 9 o'clock location will be even closer to the Terran's main. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a Protoss player, so I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't know, like... Like exactly why? Like you okay? Because you know you you said that, that he waits for the dragoon right to come out or will start building for his gun, but this this time he hasn't even like he's gonna he's gonna dragoon scout right? He's not even gonna scout yeah. the first. Um, I mean dra dragoon scout. I I guess it's it's okay if the Terran's not being aggressive, but I kind of feel like you know if if Terran does anything aggressive, it's it's too late, right? It's just too late. Yeah. I don't like the Dragoon Scout either, because if uh, Terran opens Vulture first, the Vulture is just going to get in, see the natural, go into the main, get maybe two or three probes, for free even. Well, that, that, that depends, right? I mean, if the Protoss queues up another Dragoon, like right now, which uh, Cho is, it's going to be out right before the Vulture gets out. But uh, Cra let's look like Crazy's going to do that. He's going to go super standard Terran. Like, you can see Bunker, and he's going to go for like a machine shop, right? So this is like... As standard a Terran opening as you can, as one can, one can imagine, right? Mm -hmm. it looks like that was twenty three Nexus for coming up for Chiu as well. Yeah. Just after one goon. One gate. Uh, He's quite robot. bold after no scout as well. With no scout, he does a one goon Nexus experiment. Yeah, that is pretty bold. Like I have to say. Oh, the SCV is actually just gonna waltz right in without another, <laughs> because the second goon will start quite late. Yes. Gets to see the one gate robo as well, and the three pylons and the fourth pylon. So, no real early DT shenanigans <clears throat> coming out for Chiu, and Crazy should know that as well. Yeah, no one base reaver, right? Not, not, <laughs> nothing crazy like that. No double gate, triple gate robo like bulldog, right? <laughs> oh, uh. yeah. Yeah, I, I think. I think Chill has been really, really, really greedy, actually, this game, you know, going with no scout, you know, Dragoon scout first. He delayed his um, second Dragoon to get robotics at first, right? Uh, but he's going to get away with it, you know, right? He's actually going for shuttle first without building an observatory yet. So it looks like he's going to go for Reaver Tech as well, just in base this time. Yeah. Should be seeing the support bay going down now. There it is. And Crazy already building his engineering bay. Uh, opting to go for the engineering bay instead of the academy. Right. So he, he could be very, very ready for this river drop as well. Yeah, he, he seems to be like aware of it, right? Um, I don't think his, like, his SCV wouldn't have told him that this was Reaver, but I guess maybe he just knows Chill's like, playstyle, right? He's already prepared for Reaver. I think it's a good guess. I think if you see one game Robo, it is a very good guess that it's going to be Reaver. Right. Okay, we, yeah, we see if the... You see, if you see around two or three gates with Reaver, then... Uh, sorry, with Robo, I think it's very clear it's Observatory, but if you see one game Robo, Robo that quickly, I think it's a very good guess that it is going to be Reaver. Yeah, we see a fact CC fact timing coming out of uh, Crazy, right? Yep. The infamous like a uh, triple tank, vultures and a couple of marine push. Well, I say that, but like looks like he's he's thinking not to do it anymore, right? He's he's falling back. I love this move from Crazy, pushing out with his first three tanks before the goons are really together, and then able to get those vultures out, lay some mines, and get some vision on the map as well. You know, a lot of times you. Get those vultures because the build tells you. You send them out and they just lose to the dragoons early on. But with what Crazy's doing here, if he's sending out the first three tanks, he's able to make space for those vultures to freely come out on the map. And I think he saw it with the he saw the shuttle. He was paying attention with the mines. It Ooh, flew over. I think he's very close. I think it was very on the edge. Right. We'll see if he actually saw it or if he actually registered it with his eyes. Yeah, like the, the 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 thing with StarCraft is even if you have vision, it's like like did he did he actually see it or like did he not? You know, because sometimes you're just not paying attention, right? There's so much going on. 
Okay, here comes the first shelter coming in with the naked main. No turrets coming down as well. Yeah, this this is gonna do critical Whoa. damage unless uh. Crazy's... Okay, crazy still not quite responding. Let's look at the kill count for the weaver. So two Ooh. or three there. That's I think that's four at least. Five. Yeah, it's five oh kills. Oh my god, this is a lot of SCVs, and it looks Six. like he's trying to go for a five factory timing as well. And you cannot lose SCVs when you're trying to do that. Dude, he killed. Okay, the goon does go down, but he's gonna get a second shot on the tanks and get one as well. This was an excellent reaver job. Yeah, I like th this was pretty huge, man. Um, he, crazy. He lost so many SCVs. I don't know if he can come back from this actually. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused. Okay, he also have has an anti DT turret. I think a lot of our Terran players have DT PTSD. But not yet Reaver PTSD. Because <laughs> we see a lot of these engineering bays come down if they didn't scout, and then we see an anti DT turret, but no real measures against a quick Reaver quite yet. Yeah, it, it kind of it's kind of like ladder inside you, right? Because every single Protoss you, you, you face, then it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do DT rush, right? <laughs> it's really common, actually. Yeah, it, I think it just feels the worst when you hear those cape boys just swipe and you're like okay i lost gg and a lot of us are going for those anti-dt turrets rather than actually properly finding out what the tech is instead nice. but it looks like crazy is able to stabilize and get a lot of tanks out um he's gonna come out with his first eight tanks here yeah. and actually chill doesn't have a lot of goons so this can be very dangerous for him. Oh, these three goons should not... Oh, okay, he's bleeding a lot of goons. We'll see how Chill is able to manage his uh, Reavers to stop this push coming out. Yeah. The Reavers are, are what's going to like allow him to hold on, if, if he does hold on anyway. Okay, really nice pick up there. We need to buy time for Chill to get his extra gateways. He does have his extra gateways already, but we need to get a couple rounds of units coming out there because he's on four goons. Right. Uh, yeah, but we we can also see that like, like that reaver drop like at the beginning that was huge. I mean, you can see crazy how delayed the fifth factory from uh, like crazy was. Like, this right. army could have been infinitely larger had the reaver not killed like you know, like fifty SCVs or something like that. Yeah, he is on 37, 38 SCVs right now. He's actually getting his third CC as he's doing this push, which I love that move as well. He's not committing to this push. If this push goes bad, he does have a third CC to fall back on. Yeah, that would put him ahead of the Protoss, since the Protoss doesn't have a third start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Chill was going to go for that carry attack again, but he stopped it after the Stargate, knowing the push is going to come out. Yeah. Okay, this is, this is the important moment when the Zealots are here. And if, let's see if he's going to do a good siege. This is an excellent position he's carded for himself. Mm, the okay. tanks are kind of clumped, man. Like, like you see what's coming. Yeah, this is very scary. Okay, Chill going for the Zealot Bomb. And the Reaver should be dropping soon. About... Is he going to drop it? I think he's waiting for him. The extra units to come down. Okay, the Reaver does come down. Gets a nice shot off. And the tank's gonna move forward. Oh, doesn't get that river. We have a really nice shot again there. And he's gonna siege right here. This is about. Oh, this doesn't look very good for you at all. He's gonna get the river. To, oh, okay, oh, saves the river. The shells missed. If you look at the. Okay, this is questionable. Oh, three tanks with one river shot. Okay, I'm not sure about this siege right now because the zealots are just gonna get these tanks for free. Yeah, the vulture it's reinforcements one, two, were punch. too late. Look, look, look at the vultures, oh, yeah. they're too late. So, Chill does get to hold here. Crazy does have a third base finished though. That CC is flying <laughs> off to the wrong area. He needs to get that back really nice, quickly. There we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised at how, um, how far Crazy made it, despite all the damage he took. Like, that was really big damage he took, but he's not that far on, off, like, supplies, right? He's ahead in workers with a third, so he's really not in that bad of a position. Starport yeah. already up, right? Armory up. He did oh. a good job with the push. I think at just at the very end, that last siege was 
detrimental. He could have saved all of those tanks if he brought some SCVs and he waited for the portal reinforcements as well. That yeah, could have ended the game right there. I, I, I agree too, yeah. I, I think yeah the biggest thing was the vultures, right? They, they weren't they weren't rallying, you know, with the tanks. Uh, look at Chill again. Let's see if uh sorry, go ahead. Look look at Chill's base, he's going for like the carrier scan. Oh yeah. But he has a better gateway count now this time, and he's actually producing off of the eight gateways before he's actually getting the carriers. So we should be able to see a good ground army before uh, any of his carriers are out. And this actually shuttle it was heading towards the third base, but it elected not to, going for these vultures instead. Wait, what, what? What's crazy doing? How come he's oh he's pre preemptively pulled his SCVs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> preemptively pulled them. I'm not sure if that was necessary though, because like his tanks were already on the way. Uh, he looked... Oh, these two marines at the start actually helping out to kill the shuttle, and let's see if Chu was able to run out of there with the shuttle alive. He does drop the reaver on the very bottom of the supply depot. Nice shot there. Damn, the minimap can't see anything. Oh, that reaver is on one HP. Okay. Oh, oh this could close. be huge. Really nice micro coming out from Chu. Oh, doesn't get the second shot off. That would have been two tanks right there. And is he going to get hit by the turret as he goes out? Oh, look at the third, look oh. at the third. At the same time. Oh, yeah, really nice move with his Dragoon and Tillot army. He's gonna be able to just waltz right in and get the CC. Yeah. Where are the units coming up for crazy? Oh, they're just coming out a little bit too late. They were all back in the main trying to defend. Like, he had triple tanks, remember, in the main and all that? Like, trying to defend the, the, um, the Reaper. Yeah, really nice move from Chill. Just going to both locations here, able to get a really nice position on this high ground. This is gonna be quite tough to push through. Especially with just two tanks. It's gonna take out the missile turret to see if we can get another shuttle coming out. He's not really building one yet. And Chill's just gonna be focusing on killing these SCVs as he delays the Terran from being able to push up here. A lot of Zealot reinforcements coming in. I don't know if um, Crazy can hold the third. That's one thing about oh, this yeah, map these... though. It, it's so hard to hold the third, unbuildable ground, and the third's like a million miles away from the, from the natural, right? Yeah, definitely. Actually, I think this is gonna kill the game just now. Yeah. This... Crazy's not gonna be able to establish his third properly. Well, no, he, he... Oh, well, yeah, actually. Wow, look look at that. Look at Chill's being on top of his macro. Like a huge Congo line of like Protoss units. Oh, wow, yeah. Just eight gateways going through now. In, uh -huh. And he's producing carriers on the back of it, so if it doesn't pay off, he's going to be able to uh, get a very high-tech army. But this is too many units for Crazy to hold, I think, with just one siege tank. Yeah, I think I think, I think, think Chill's done oh, it. What is that mine? I think, yeah, he's, he's, his gateway man's done it, you know, he just overran, like, uh, Crazy yeah. production. Okay, a little bit of a sloppy game from both sides, I think, but Chill's able to get that really nice positioning and army control to win him the game. Yeah, well, not to mention that really good Reaver attack, right? Reaver in the first place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's game. Uh, a bit unfortunate for Crazy, I think. He definitely could have ended the game with that first push, but just unable to do it properly and not get the proper siege down. But a great game over. Yeah, all these games have been pretty close to be honest. Like I, I, I can't really say that one player had an overwhelming edge against the against the other player, right? It was really back and forth. Like both players, had they done a little bit different, like uh, at different points in the game, they they could have taken it. Yeah, I think we're seeing a bit of a pattern where Chill <laughs> is going for those early reaver drops, getting some damage in, almost dies to the first push, able to make it back and extend it to the late game. Right. And I think it really says something about the matchup on this map, like Terran versus Protoss. All the Terrans are always going like uh, two bases, you know, two base attack. Right? Oh yeah, De definitely. Difficult to hurt that third base. Okay. Uh, in the top right, we have Doglift as the orange Zerg. And in the bottom left, we have Chill again as the Brew Boss. All right, Doglift. So we have a different matchup now. TVZ. Yeah, PVZ. Yeah. Oh, sorry, not TVZ. PVZ, sorry. Yeah, PVZ. 
Uh, just to let everyone know, we are both Terran players, so... <laughs> um, this game... This matchup is not something that we know a lot about. But we'll see how it plays out, especially in Eclipse, because it is an interesting map for PvZ on Eclipse. Yeah, definitely. You know, Shroom, I've been playing this new game called Hades. Have you have you have you seen that game? Uh, I can't say I have. Um, you know, you know that game a very very long time ago called Bastion. <laughs> can't say I have. Yeah, it's, I think it's made by the same guys who made that game. I think that won like Game of the Year back in like 2010 or 11 or something. And I've been playing this new game called Hades. It's really good. You should check it out. Yeah, maybe I will. Um... But uh, I've been too busy playing Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> That's why I haven't oh, yeah. played StarCraft. <laughs> oh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, gorgeous game. Yeah. Looks like it is going to be a gate opening for Oxy Drop there. Yeah. And a hatchery first from local live as well. Right, yeah. Ch Chill really favors um, um, gate first now. And I, I think it, it's it's like the meta almost. like There are products that do forge expand, right? That, that's still a thing, but... From from what I've seen, most products they do gate um, gate first now. It, it's just because it gives you so much like utility and like versatility as well, right? With the first all out, you can maybe pressure a bit, uh, force out links. Uh, you, you can also defend, but I mean, it, it takes a lot more skill to defend with gate first than forge first, obviously, right? Like cannon versus yeah. a lot. But I mean, if you have good micro, gate first is better than cannon first. And actually, chill. I think he's going for it. Cannon rush here. His forge is in the main, and his probe is in a very suspicious location. Okay, that pylon cannot be. Oh, it can be seen by Dog Live. So if he's paying attention, he might be able to see the little blue dot on his minimap. And we'll see how many drones he wants to pull. If he wants to pull any drones at all, I like this move. This is very interesting. And the zealot's going to come out as well. He's going to get a free cannon off. Yeah, he's channeling his um. Oh shoot! I, I forgot to turn off the replay <laughs> bar, so I bet I bet everybody already knows what happens. But uh, <laughs> That's right. it's a huge mistake. But yeah, th oh, this really is really nice cannon going up. Yeah, wasn't this done by some guy in the ASL? Uh, I think it was be um one of the newer, not not a newer, but like, like a return one of the returning Protoss players. I forgot his name. Yeah. JYJ might be. I think JYJ is a Terran player, right? Yeah, I vaguely remember the last ASL. Some some guy did this, like some of the yeah. players. Yeah. It could have been shuttle. I don't think it was shuttle though. Oh, but this cannon rush was very nicely held by Doglip. Actually, just with two or four links, he was able to hold it off. So. Yeah, he really sure. got in got on top of those like cannons, really, you know. And then I I don't think it was really I don't know. It, it was weird, like. Like it wasn't really I think sealed that Chill should have blocked off the area with his pylons rather than building the cannons in those locations. Actually, those links are going to go through really easily. Oh, nice block from Chill, but is he actually going to be able to hold here? Because if the cannon goes down, it looks like it's going to be GG. Oh, that, nicely done from Chill, but two that was amazing. That was amazing from Chill. Like he could have died right there. Okay, well, here comes another okay part the of second the round of links coming in. Oh, the cannon coming down. That's really that's the first warning sign for an early loss for Protoss, but we'll see how well Doglet can transition from here, if he's going to make more links or not. Yeah, it looks like he's just continuing to make links. He does have speed on the links, uh, which will help him greatly, but I mean, I cannot overstress like how well Chill held that. Like, that Zergling Flood could have ended the game right there. Like, that was... Yeah, definitely. Uh, and that is really, really hard to do for Protoss. Like, really, really hard to to micro your probes and zealots, especially against such a large amount of, of speed links. Yeah, it was excellent probe micro. Getting those probes on the ramp first of all, and then second of all, winning the fight on the low ground as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay, like... the third round of links coming in here. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to do much. Okay, four links do get into the main, but if they're fighting the zealots, that's not really the correct decision. And dog lift. And dog lift. Like, yeah, taps out. Yeah, I I agree with that. that was the right option because if you looked at Dog Live's um, economy and everything, he never made more than nine drones. He was fully committed, right? He wasn't even mining gas anymore. Yeah, I think he was going to go for a good old macro game, but he changed his playstyle once he saw the cannon rush and he thought that he could 
just cut off Chu <clears throat> right there and then, but wasn't able to control his lings as best as possible. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't fault like Dog Lived at all. Like the logic behind it was sound. He shot that cannon rush down so like hard, right? Like it was, like it made sense to immediately counter, right? And uh, and the game yeah. there, but no, I agree. Yeah, but Chill's micro just a little, little too good, <laughs> a little yeah, a little too good. That first block was like, really, really excellent. Okay, so Eclipse again for this week. We have on the top right the Purple Protoss, the booties. That's not, that's, that's magenta. And magenta. Magenta? Okay, magenta. Yeah, magenta. Or, okay, then we have deep sea blue. In the bottom left, we have Protoss player, chill. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, because uh, these are the preseason games, all the games are played on Eclipse, so it's just the same map over and over and over again, right? So, how do you find Eclipse? Do you enjoy Eclipse as a Terran player? Um, I enjoy Terran vs Protoss and Terran vs Zerg on this map. But TBT is kind of a uh, it's, it's kind of a slog on this map because of how like oh, yeah. you know there's like the high grounds in front of your your, your base, right? Like you can see, mm -hmm. like the probe from Debuti's coming out, like that high ground. If you get tanks on there, you know. It's, uh, like, yeah, I don't think it's yeah, a good. It's very team easy team to yet. establish a position if you get there first. So just by simply getting there first, it's quite um, easy to hold that position. Right. Uh, well, we do see Debuti's. He does go for like pylon scout. So this kind of leads me to think that he's gonna try to throw down some manor pylons or something, man, and like you know, in chills like main. And uh, you know it, it actually is worth it. Like if you, if you manor pylon and you like get some probes and trap in there, and or even if you don't, like the lost mining time is it's worth more than the 100 minerals you lose from doing the pylon that the guys made. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like the beauty's actually going for anything of that sort, but we'll see if Chi was able to block him if he does go for it. Yeah, no, I, I think in with the probe now. He, he's gonna he's gonna try right. He has to. He's he's trying yeah. to. It's hard to do though, you gotta time it, right? You gotta time it when the probes. Yeah. I think the opportunity was there, but I don't think uh, the booties actually elected to go for it. Just doing a little bit of pro progress. Yeah. And uh, Zealot first coming out for Chill, but no Zealot for the booties. Yeah, it's going Cybercore. I mean, this 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 favors um, like Chill, like. like by a, a wide margin, you know, if, if you pull your probe off so early, like you nine pylon, you gotta at least try to do something like a gas deal or like manor pylon or something, you know. Like, I mean, in PvP, there, there's almost no no reason for you to do like pylon scout that early, right? And not try something. Yeah, definitely. It just hurts the economy, right? And uh, yeah, and you can see everything is a little bit faster for Cho as well. His dragoon starting a little bit quicker. His core was finished a little bit quicker. Yeah. Oh, and if you actually check the cyber core, he started air weapons um, as a mine game, I guess. But you need to cancel that now since the probe died. Unless this is a big, big mistake. It's not <laughs> a mistake. Uh, check the bottom left. He's going uh, Citadel, so it will be dark. Yeah. So he. Okay. There we go. He has canceled the tech now. And by the way, everyone, uh, air weapons is cheaper than Dragoon range, which is why, because he's he was game for the early Citadel, he wasn't able to afford it while the probe was alive. So he goes and clicks on the air weapons to fake a normal Dragoon range upgrade. Yeah, um, I think the booties is completely fooled. I I don't see any response, like no uh, no Forger Robo. I mean, I guess if, if you're going so early. Okay, he's getting Robo now, but the position that he's he's put it in, uh, well, actually no, he, he can still he can still get OBS, but um, no, no, I I take that back. Yeah, he can still get OBS, right? I don't know if it'll be in time though. I mean, that, that Citadel's already up. Uh, yeah, I think that on the putting the Robo on the foreground is very very normal to do as a Protoss player, just to yeah, if yeah, you take, need to defend with that first Reaver. Yeah. 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 You can just slow crawl its way down the ramp rather than having to walk all the way across the main. Yeah, rather than having to go for shuttle and all that, right? Yeah, it, this is a one gateway DT timing, and 
with a nexus behind it, so it's not really completely all in. Yeah, we'll see uh, if the booties is going to put down an observatory right now. Oh, do you need to put it down quickly? Yeah, he, he needs um. Okay, he does go observatory okay, first. Uh, good, good. So DT is coming out now. I think with the rush distance on this map, I don't think she was able to get into the main before the observer is going to come out. The observatory builds quite quickly. It's only fifty. Uh, well, it's only fifty, fifty, right? Fifty minerals, fifty gas. Mhm. Mm DT okay. heading across. Yeah, the observer has already started, so it doesn't look like she was able to get any damage done. But he does have the quicker nexus compared to the booties, so oh, yeah. he can always fall back on that. Well, I'm, I'm actually kind of worried for Chill. Uh, like if, okay, he's, he's gonna I mean, he's gonna get the quicker nexus, but once the DT like dies to like the observer, right? Because they're spotting for it, the booties might just like counterattack, right? You know? Yeah. Because he knows like. Oh, and look at that timing. The observer just gets out in exactly the correct time yeah, to stop wow. that first DT. Really nicely done from the booties. Very clean, very clean from the booties. So it could be that the booties suspected some suspicious tech because of the chills pilot placement, but he doesn't know completely. So he might have just gone for the most safe build that you can do, which is one gate observatory. I thought the most safe uh, Protoss vs Protoss build was the uh, 3 gate ops. Isn't that the most safe build? 3 gate ops? Yeah, oh, I think uh, against DT, it would be the safest. Yeah, 3 gate ops. To get the 1 gate observatory, yeah. No, but like it's it's one base. Like you have 3 gates and like uh, the observatory. Like you can time it out. That's the safest build, right? Because it defends against everything in this matchup. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm not a Protoss player. I just, uh, it's just what I heard. It's what I heard, right? Three gate obs is the safest. No, I think you're right. Three gate obs is probably the best instead of going for the Nexus, but he does choose to go for the Nexus this time. Yeah. Uh, I like how Chill got some photon cannons, actually, at his natural. Like, you, you think, like, oh, like, uh, you know, it, it's it's stupid, right? He's not getting attacked or anything. But the thing is, we're watching the replay. Like, we see it with 2020 vision, right? Like, like the booties could have, like ima imagine if he didn't have cannons. The booties could just come over the map right now and kill him with his, his army. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and and you never know, right? You never know if he's actually gonna move out or not. Yeah, yeah and Chill did go for the very quick storm follow up as well. Um, yeah. The only thing that I don't see from Chill is the observatory, so he has no idea what the booties is up to, and the booties just gets the free observer into the Chill's main as well. Yeah, he sees everything. Um, this lack of vision is going to come back and hurt Chill. But again, he, he does have he does have tech, and he does have economy going for him. Right? Yeah, he's already getting his his plus one, so his army is going to be a little better. Um, it does look like the economy has just kind of evened out overall, even though Chill did get the earlier next. And actually, Chill is down probe, so he must have either been put pylon blocked or uh, neglected his probe production for a little bit. I think he just neglected his pro production for a bit. Uh, he he definitely could have been up on pros, but he got his like nexus a lot faster. Right? So. Oh, definitely. It looks like Chill is going for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gateways right now. Uh, looking to do a, a big push soon, and Dibuti sees everything. So if he just matches the gateway count and gets has the reaver already as well. Yeah, Dibuti's throwing down his own gateways. Um, there are only five gates, but he has, yeah, as you said, he does have Reaver, he does have that uh, shuttle with, with the Reaver, which is really, really good. And I love these probes coming out from Dibuzi, it's giving him extra vision on the map. Yeah, they're, they're Just like... to be able to catch... Yeah, they're like stand-ins for <laughs> observers, but I really think, like, if you're gonna do that, observers are better, aren't they? Like, why would you want, like, Yeah, I think, I think observers would be better, but I think he made the two and got the shuttle Reaver, just for... To be able to harass from just like right now. Gonna deny the probe on the third. Yeah. He can just fly in as well. Storm, however, is a very good counter to Shuttle Weaver. But Dibutis does have the speed shuttle. I think this is a speed shuttle. Yeah, I saw him going for the Gravitrox, like the boosters, the thrusters. Yeah, it, it oh, just yeah. finished. So now yeah, he has it. Yeah, the booty's worried about storm drops. He's got a cannon behind his minerals, a natural cannon in the main, right? Oh, really solid play from the booty's. Just checking all his uh, checklists. Yeah. Dotting his eyes, crossing his T's. He's 
getting the Temple Archives right now as well. He's a little bit of pilot block at this moment, unfortunately. But he is very much up on the probe count, even though uh, Chu was looking for the third Nexus quicker. But he's down about nine probes, even though he went the early DT tech. But he didn't do any damage with the DT tech. He had an earlier Nexus, but he's just down in probes right. uh, production. Well, I okay, yeah, okay. It, it is good to have extra probes so you can instantly main art the probes over when you get the third. But theoretically, if Chill, I mean, he's obviously gearing up to get like a third. But theoretically, if he never does get the third, like that's all the probes you actually need, you know, to mine off two. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, but yeah. It, it's it's for like when you when you get your third, you can instantly main art like um, a good amount of probes to saturate right away, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, I would say yeah, D Booty is definitely he's, he's definitely pulled ahead in this game. Um, He's, he's up on supply, up on economy. His third is faster than Chills as well, actually. Right now, I think Chill does have the leg up on the tech as well because of the Templars that he made early on. They have full energy now. So you can either elect to go for stone drops or use them during the fight. And it looks like Chill's going to move out now as well yeah. onto the high ground. He doesn't have any observers, so he doesn't know where the army is. But if he gets a really juicy storm on here, he will be able to win the fight. Oh, he has an observer with his army. Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry. I didn't see that. Fighting off Okay, Dabuti has to back off here. Running away, has to join up with the rest of his army and the river as well. I mean, yeah. It all comes down to control now. Yeah, well, I mean, the one, okay, one thing that is in um, Chill's favor is that he is well. He's, he's a little bit down. He's almost even in supply, but he's down almost like what, well, like what, like nine, nine, um, nine probes. So his army is bigger, right? And as you said, he's got like the Templar tech versus a Reaver shuttle, right? So, uh, but he, but I kind of feel like that window is closing. You know what I'm saying? As the game goes on, the duties will have that. Oh, okay, really? Hold nice that storm. thought. Yeah, that was an amazing storm. Uh, a bit of a whiff on the second storm there. But he does have a lot of energy still on these Templars, so we'll see how. Well, Chill is able to fight his way up this ramp here. Yeah, this is definitely hard. The, the booties has the high ground, right? <laughs> so, well, I don't yeah, know. And the Archon as well, just to be able to soak up those zealots. Okay, All we right, see we the front combination going down now. We'll take a look at the storms coming down for Chill. Should be able to see one going down the river really nicely. A second one on top of the Dragoons. And it looks like the Dragoon count with the booty is just enough to be able to take this fight. And the river. The, First river does go down, but the second river is still alive and really nicely fought by the booties. Especially with that Archon killing a lot of zealots. Yeah, Chill's in a bit of trouble now. Um, the booties took that fight pretty well, and he has a big army left over as well. Uh, uh, we can see the desperation Archons coming out for Chill. Right, and the extra photon warping in. Let's see if the booties is going to press the issue. He does have a shuttle with the reaver in it, so he can get something done. Uh, no energy on these tempos because they just did come out, but not the best control coming out here from Tabuzi. Looting, losing a lot of Dragoons for free. He needs to be able to control his Reaper perfectly. Oh, the shuttle is gonna go Ooh. down as well, so Chu has turned the table in this fight. Very nicely hold. Yeah, a bit of an overextension by Tabuzi's. Um... He, had a, he definitely had a chance there to do something, but I think a little bit of miscontrol. I don't think I saw the Reaver fire like once, or maybe it did, I maybe I missed it. Like, but at that um, at that natural, right? He kept picking it up and like dropping it, but it never actually fired. So no, chill. I don't think it ever fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I didn't see it fire once, so chill will stabilize. The booty's already getting his fourth though, and he's put, you know, it's cannon defense, right? He's put, like a, he's put a lot of cannons, so it's going to be secure. Yeah, the booty, once his fourth is. Uh, operating, he should be able to make a lot more gateways and the first one, extra one's going down now. And I would love to see him make Templars on his side as well, just to be able to combat <coughs> Chill's high-tech army. Yeah. Yeah, both players definitely in it still. Uh, but, you know, definite edge to the booties over Chill right now. Yeah. If, if the booty is able to just get this base going, and it looks like it is, it's five cannons on the ramp choke like this. It's really nice and safe. Yeah, um, I like how the booty... should be adding a lot more gateways. We should be seeing a gateway explosion coming from him. Yeah, he's kind of funneling a bit of money, eh? Like, he's, the macro's not really there. Well, actually, for both players, the macro's kind of slipping. Uh, he looks oh, like... bit of a miscontrol coming here from Debuzi. 
Yeah, he's gonna lose his uh, four dragoons and. Okay, he breaks. This is not very good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's gonna abandon the attack for now. And just let Chu get his fourth base. Again, fourth base for Chu is a little bit slower. So, if we are able to see a good macro rounds coming from the booties, get a lot more gateways than this, he should be able to have a superior army later on. Right. But he's focusing a lot of his money on building cannons. You can see a lot of cannons going down on the third, a lot of cannons going down on the fourth as well. Well, I mean, I don't blame him. Like, you know, one Templar drop, you know, which it looks like what that's what Chill's trying to do. It will, it will wipe out the probe line, right? Like, the probe, his probe lead will like, evaporate, right? So. Yeah. Well, cool. I thought it looks like they're attacking out from the booties. Uh, just kidding. Oh, He's a falling back. storm from, from Chill. Yeah, repulsed by uh, Chill's forces on the high ground. They're even It's so difficult to get up this ramp on either side. And you really need a lot, a lot more army than the other opponent player to be able to push through. Alright. Joe tried to do a Templar drop by the way at uh, the sport, but only killed one probe. Oh, only one probe, okay. Yeah, not worth it. Did he lose the shuttle as well? Lost the shuttle, yeah. And the Templar. Ooh. You can really see that reflected in the supply count as well. Really healthy probe count coming out from Dibuti. 66 is exactly about what you want. Yeah, Dibuti's is really pulling ahead now, right? Like in supplies. Okay, well. he's gonna pull the trigger now. With the Zealots at the front, if we see some good storms coming out from the booties, he should be able to take this fight. A lot of the Dragoons are clumped from Chill as well. Decent storms coming out from Chill side, but it looks like the Zealot count from the booties is going to be able to take <clears throat> the win on this fight. And the Dragoons reinforcing from the back as well. And you should be seeing one extra or two extra storms from the booties. But it really was those mass amount of Zealots winning the fight with the booties. He's actually going to go for the fourth instead of the natural. Yeah, I think that's actually smart, right? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see if he can get that involved. So many cannons though, and Chill's gonna bring his probes here to block, maybe body body block. Oh, not the most efficient way to take out this base right now. He should have really had the zealots going first, but we'll see if we can get a good position up here. There's a decent storm on the probe line, but he's able gonna lose almost all of his army. Yeah, that was definitely now not worth it. Tables have turned again in this game. Yeah. For the first time, Chill taking the supply lead, right? And uh yeah, that, that attack, it killed like, what, like two cannons? <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's... I mean, he, he got a couple of probes as well, he got a good storm in the probe line, but losing all of your Templars, all of your Archons, all of your DTs, really not the great move. Yeah, it's not really worth it. And uh, to be honest, Chill has, well, he's got like five Nexus, no, he's got like four Nexi at this point, right? He can easily replenish the probe count, right? Losing a couple probes, it's not a big deal. Right? Definitely. And it looks right. like Dibuti's macro is slipping up a little bit, going up to 2,000 minerals. We really need to see those extra gateways going down now to be able to spend all that money. Yeah, he really needs a ton, a lot more gates. We've seen another fight. Oh, decent storm coming. Oh, great storm on the top right here from Chill. And another one really oh, good running storm. through that storm as well as he's retreating. Really great storms coming out from Chill. It looks like he has two more storms left in him. Yeah. Um, the booty's looking to take another base, uh, looks like. Uh, yeah, he is getting, like, he's slowly adding more gates, but he needs, like, five more gates yeah. at least. Like, he needs, like, like, he could afford, like, he can literally afford five more gates, man, but I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think one of the pieces of advice that I uh, saw um, Fiber here give is, if you're floating minerals, just spend it all till you get to zero. So, like, just, just queue up two or three Dragoons if you don't want to add gateways. If you have to add gateways, just go on a gateway explosion. You just need to spend the money that you have. Right. Because it doesn't matter if you have a superior economy if you're not really spending the economy at all. Yeah, right. Like rule 101 of StarCraft, spend your minerals. <laughs> spend the gas. Yeah. Oh, uh, it looks like Dibuti is taking a really poor fight here. Wasn't yeah. able to take <clears throat> out any of the Archons. Just suiciding those zealots into the Chill's archons, actually. Yeah, the the crazy thing is, if you look at the money, like like Chill, he's spending all he has, but Dibuti is like if if Dibuti only just spent his money, like he could have, like, he would win, right? But like, but now we yeah. see, just by just by virtue of like superior macro from coming out from like Chill, he has a massive lead, you know, even though he has a like a little bit worse of an economy, right? 
And the economy is just going to be evened out now as well. And it looks like Chill's try going to pull the trigger. I wouldn't really quite do it yet. I would wait until a larger army before you pull the trigger here. But he has a great position between uh, the natural and the third of the booties here. Right. Yeah. And he's able to contain the uh, Debuti's army. We want to see Debuti's money going down soon, hopefully. Oh, yeah, decent still... storm coming up from Chill, just getting those Ooh. off with the high Templars. Yeah, he's, he's basically reduced the shields to almost nothing. And Debuti's still bleeding a couple of units. He needs to re rally those units. And we really need to see him spend all of his money. Some of his gateways are even inactive right now as well. It looks like the six arc. Okay, the booties is going to pull the trigger here, but with the archon count coming in from Chill, I don't think this is going to really pay off. All yeah. of these zealots are going to get melted. Dude, but the green count with from the booties is okay. Okay. Flank coming in from Chill. He saw like his reinforcements flank the booties and the. A really nice reinforcement from Chill, able to overwhelm the booties army and GG. It's GG. Yeah. Wow. I. I mean, I really, I really thought the booties was gonna take that game, man. Like, I really did think he was gonna take that game, but uh, I, I guess it just goes to show like how how important the macro is, right? <laughs> like what you were talking about. Yeah, I think um, once he won that fight, I think about two or three fights ago, and he was pushing into the fourth, it was looking very, very good for the booties, but he was just slipping on the macro there to be able to follow up properly. Yeah. And it looks like it was 2-2 two, two for Chill, right? Or yeah. was it three, three, three games to one or 2-2? Two, two? No, 3-1. Three, three to one. He won. He, lo he, he lost one, but he won the other, other ones. Oh, yeah. 3-1. to yeah. one. So, nice preseason week for coming out from Chill. Well, definitely. Winning three games. Okay. In the next game we have, on the top right, the Green Terran. Crazy. And in the bottom left, we have the Yellow Terran. Neon Sword. Well, you know what? It's finally happened. It's finally happened. Terran vs. Terran on Eclipse. Oh. TVT on Eclipse, I actually don't mind too much. Um, it's a little unclear where your lines are supposed to be on this map, especially because there's so many different pathways you can take. Yeah. So uh, it does get a little bit complicated. I think... Terran players going heavily into dropships would favor that player in Eclipse just because there's a lot of their, um, little different air paths that you can take. Yeah. Uh, this... Um, nah, I don't know. I don't even want to cast this one, man. Like, TVT on Eclipse. Like, it... I'm just getting, like, like flashbacks to my own games. <laughs> you know, my, my own games on this map. I mean, it's... It's not pretty, man. It's not pretty, yeah. Uh, um... I mean, that's like crazy. He's gonna go for a proxy um, barracks here. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's it's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah. It, but by virtue of the proxy barracks, I kind of feel like he will try some early aggression. You know, maybe maybe like a couple of marines with some SCVs, but like this well, the initial SCV, right? You can you can definitely press like press the front, especially if Neon doesn't get enough marines. Like some, some I've seen. Okay, in TVT, like the openings are. They're so varied, man. They're so varied, even for similar builds. Like, if Neon is tries to go greedy, he can actually make zero marines sometimes and still get away with it. Still get his factory first, right? Uh, he can go three marines, right? If he wants to be safe. Yeah. Like, there are so many variables and so many little risks, risk and rewards you can kind of like try, right? Try and get. Uh, but there's also a lot of risks you can take and get punished for it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which you know, which is exactly what we're gonna see right now, right? So if Neon. If he skips marines, or even he gets like one marine or something, right, and then gets factory. Uh, crazy can't punish him. This uh, crazy can I think, punish him. Uh, yeah. For factory expand, it is normal to get about two marines, but we'll see if Neon Sword does the same here. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it, it's totally standard to get like two two marines, right, and get like, vulture first mm -hmm. if you want to do factory expand. But like I'm just saying, like I I have seen so many TVT games, you know, that like guys they they try to cut like. <laughs> They try to cut marines and stuff for like a faster CC, and you can get away with it. Like, if Crazy's building his like barracks in his own main, he only goes for one marine himself or skips marines, right? Then you can totally get away with it yourself, right? But uh, looks like yeah. Neon Sword, he is playing super safe, super standard. You know, two marines, he's gonna leave the three marines actually, yeah. So this is 
Um, yeah, Neon does know there's a barracks out on the map <clears throat> because right. he did scout the main. And he should know he's one Rax as well because he saw the gas in the back go down. Um, but it looks like Crazy might be able to win this fight because he has the SCP. But the third Marine coming out to perfect timing. And Crazy's just going to walk away with his tail behind his legs. Yeah, the high ground advantage is not to be uh, underestimated. Definitely. Mm. I think Crazy was just kind of hoping that Neonso was cutting on those Marines, just as you said, but Neonso getting those three Marines after getting their CV scout off, so very excellent on there. Yeah. Yeah. So well, you see coming down now for Crazy? Yeah, at least Crazy's going to get a little bit of a faster scout, I guess you could say that. Right. I don't I don't know why Neon's, um, Neon's economy is like so stunted, eh? Like, he should have his own command center going down right now. Hmm. Like it, it's yeah, just think... going down now. Yeah, it's come down right now. Okay, it's a little bit late, but I think it's okay. Yeah, but the thing is, I don't understand why though. Because if anything, crazy should be later because he had to pull a SCV earlier from off of mining, right? I think right? Um, crazy cut a supply depot. You can see he's at twenty six out of twenty six, and he's just building the depot now. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, that, yeah. that's why. So he, that's did, why. he did miss his third deploy, supply depot. If you go okay. for three marines, you need that uh, third depot to not get blocked in 26, but he forgot it, I guess. Right, yeah. yeah. A so little it bit looks of... like actually Neon Sword is marginally tiny bit ahead on the economy because he didn't get supply depot blocked. Yeah, yeah, I, I missed that actually, yeah. So, yeah, Neon Sword, okay, then all is should be, right? It, it makes sense, because I was like, how can crazy have a faster like natural at the same time right is doing what he did yeah. uh, i don't yeah. really like this from neon sword though like he he's he's making a command center on the high ground okay he had a full scout off of a crazy's like base earlier with the scv right so i i don't understand like there's no like there's no danger you know of, of this being like a two factory or something like that right no definitely i think he just elected to play it a little bit safer because he did see the first marine push come out but since he won that fight so handedly, he should be very confident in saying, I'm just going to put my CC down on the low ground and have my Marines out in the front, and you can't kill me. Yeah, uh, you know you know how you're saying Neon was a bit ahead on like on the economy? I, I don't think he is anymore, uh, because even though Crazy was a little bit supply blocked, the fact that he got his command center so fast, it was on location and mining, you could see his SMB supplies up, his, his unit supplies are up as well, you know? Mm, definitely. Yeah, so Crazy has definitely taken the lead, but he is supply blocked again. 44 44, classic. Classic Terran supply yeah, block. Yeah, classic supply block. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is the point where you get, when you, if you're practicing in single player, you get 44 44, and you're like, well, reset, just gotta start again. <laughs> yeah, like, this is like, it's one of the most common like supply blocks, 44 44. Oh, Crazy actually killing off his own Marines to <laughs> free up the supply a little bit. Uh, wouldn't want to be under his command, but yeah, he's no. actually going all vultures right now. He might push once the mines are done. And he, if he has 12 vultures, he should be able to push soon. Right. He's executing the marines for it because they failed to, they failed the mission. <laughs> they didn't do it. <laughs> they failed the early mission, so... Yeah. Okay, Neo's not actually going for the exact same thing that Crazy is doing. Crazy is adding his armory now as well. Yeah. I just want to point out this is another super standard build coming up for both guys. Like three factory, like mass Ultraman, right? I wouldn't be surprised if like he threw down two more factories to go up to five factory Ultraman, right? And then try yeah, to win if, the fact. If either Crazy or Neon did a Siege Tank or Starport build, the Vultures can do a lot of lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah, see, like bo both guys, they're they're doing like mirror builds, except for like again, Neon's a little bit late. Like he's, he's getting his armories a bit late, you know. But Crazy's faster. Crazy's already getting his fourth, right? I I do expect to see a Neon to drop another factory right now if he's not gonna do some kind of expansion. But with Vulture first, like usually we, we see like more factories going down because when it's Vulture versus Vulture, if you can win that initial mass like Vulture war fight, you have map control, right? And that yeah. is when you can like just like take expansions like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I mean, I'm not saying you can't take a CC off like a free factory vulture, but it, it usually, like, that they try to win the, the vulture the war first, which again gives you the map control, right? And look yeah. at that, mines everywhere. It's a massive minefield. It's multicolored, green and yellow. Yeah, I think the whole the map. map's gonna go green and yellow if this game does go long. <laughs> yeah. We should be seeing just the whole map just filled with yellow dots and green dots everywhere. Right. Yeah, and 
like yeah, we, we we do see both players like transitioning to siege tanks. You can see like crazy getting the plus one started at the five factory going into siege tanks. Uh, there, there's always a bit of like uh, kind of like a mis mystery timing. It, like there's no like secure timing when you go vulture versus vulture of when you want to get siege tanks first. It's kind of like who's got a better position. Ooh, hold that thought. Oh, loses that first tank. Ah, uh, that was huge. Yeah. Anyway, what I was saying was that like it re it's really up to like. The players to judge the position when you want to like, like switch off vultures, right? The tanks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because oh, I think whoever switches see. or transitions first is going to be down on vultures, and there's going to be slight timing for the opponent. Exactly, to there'll be a window for vulture fight. Well said, Danny. Um, I I don't know if you if you saw that as well though. Like a couple of neon swords mine blew up another two of Crazy's tanks. So Crazy has lost oh. three tanks right now. Which is really unfortunate because he did get the academy and the scanners, but he didn't wait until they were finished to actually push through. Human marine like minesweepers. <laughs> <laughs> A little tip for our TVT players also: if you a move across the map and you have enough units, you won't ever get hit by mines. They'll die before they actually explode. Especially if you have Goliaths. Goliaths kill mines so quickly. Yeah, there, there are actually builds where you actually go for like a Goliath timing and it actually wrecks like Vulture first. Like you think your mind's oh, like yeah, safe. Oh yeah, I've seen but... um, people go like Vulture Goliath and kill people earlier. <laughs> yeah. No tanks, just Vulture Goliath. You think you're, if you go Vulture, you think your mines will keep you safe? That's not true. The Goliaths can just walk through the mines. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, okay, looks like crazy taking up position. Uh, to setting up to deny Neon's a third, but uh, uh, you know what? Uh, I don't like Neon's build to be honest. Like, look, look at what he's going. Like, yeah, he's... really quick facility. I don't don't think that's quite necessary in this kind of matchup, especially. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. You're gonna get a faster plus two, and don't get me wrong. Like, plus two in this matchup is huge because that's when you can two shot with your tanks, your enemy tanks. But like, given his position he's in now, with only triple factory, I mean. Like he's just gonna get contained, you know, by crazy, because uh, from the sheer amount of like units crazy can produce, and crazy's already going for yeah. third. And you can see crazy establishing his um, high ground <coughs> in the middle of the map. This is not an easy position to break on either side if you get this ramp done. And if crazy is able to get this middle position, he can just take the bottom right base as well, because he has the siege line. So this is a really important part of map on Eclipse. Yeah, Neon's gonna be like, like stuck on three bases basically, right? Uh, third place team yeah. on six. Uh, I mean, Neon is transitioning into dropship play, and that's one thing you can do to get yourself back in the game if you are uh, contained. But uh, again, he, he just doesn't have the like the the production. He only got like he only has like triple factories, right? Yeah, we would love to see extra factories going down. Actually. Uh, crazy going off that eight factory count as well, so he's gonna pull ahead in the army count definitely. Uh, we can see the first dropship coming out from the other side. We see how much damage this can do. We don't see an engineering bay on either side of the players. You should get the engineering bay when you put down your third base. Everyone in TVT, uh, Yo, you can't can drop, drop there, crazy. You gotta <laughs> drop it on the yeah. There you go. Yeah. Let's see if you see just. This is get... actually gonna go unseen. Oh, if he gets a really nice volley off here. Oh, decent amount of SCPs going down, but. This okay. is gonna be quite annoying to clean up. This, he's not able to blow off the mines. Oh, oh, really nicely done. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that was not worth it. I checked the kill count. There was only five SCPs killed between those two tanks. Yeah. Definitely not worth it. Five SCPs for two tanks, not that great. We yeah. also wanna see crazy and. Neon Sword go up to those 60 or 70 SCV count hopefully very soon. And Neon Sword is building his factories now, but only two. But again, we, we want to reiterate Neon Sword. You want to be spending all of your money. Yeah. If you're at a thousand minerals, just make more factories than you would normally because you have the minerals. Yeah. And actually crazy actually going to be able to go through the middle of the map and get this high ground position as well. If Crazy gets this like high ground position, it it will be like there's not a word to describe how bad it would be for Neon if, if Crazy can take this. Yeah. Like, oh, and actually Neon is gonna come in with his vultures and he should be laying down mines on top of these tanks, hopefully. Oh, but he's gonna lose all of the vultures before they can actually do anything. And if Crazy gets this position, it's really hard to reinforce 
uh, Neon's third base because yeah. it's just cut off on this high ground right here. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, that's exactly what I, I wanted to say. Like his his third is in danger. Actually, you can ferry some units over with the dropships, but he's only got one dropship, so like well, he can he can reinforce with like what like two tanks, right? It's not fast enough. Yeah. And uh, I I would say like again, I don't want to call it, but uh, you know, you know Caster's curse and all that, right? <laughs> you say one thing and then something else happens. But uh, I I think I think Crazy's got this locked down. Um, yeah, definitely. He's got the better position. He's got the better economy. Um, and he's got the better like macro, right? And he's going up to what? He's going up to nine, nine factories now. Mm -hmm. And if he's able to actually get um, a good amount of tanks down here against the two siege tanks on the high ground, he's going to be able to take out Neon to third base. And where is Neon So really going to build his next base? Really, he can't really go to the nine o'clock. Yeah, he's got a uh, break. Doesn't have a positioning there. Yeah. He, he's got a break somewhere to be able to get out on a map or mass dropships, but I mean, he's got three yeah. dropships. He's making more dropships Definitely. now, but... Mass dropships on Eclipse is actually quite a nice strategy because you can't build on any of these. But it's actually going to go through the low ground right now. And his tanks aren't spread the best, but he's got a better siege tank out. We'll see how well the fight goes for him. He does have the plus two, so he does take the favorable fight against Crazy. It's actually going to establish his position on the high ground now here. So if he's able done. to get up a little bit closer, he's going to be able to skew his third. But oh, crazy, really, really nice move getting into uh, Neosur's third and killing all the SEDs. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, when okay when, when a Terran attacks you, I know it's hard to do because there's a lot of like things going on. You want you want to actually try to manually target your siege tanks on their tanks. Like you don't want your tanks to like to hit their vultures and stuff. Actually, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. You gotta fix the. You gotta. You gotta manually control their AI because they're so stupid. They spend all of their attacks on one unit. You're not gonna win that fight. Well, yeah. You want to target the tanks because the tanks are what uh, are what make the Terran army, right? The vultures. They're, they're just yeah. meat shields, right? Okay, we see a triple. A really drop. nice drop coming from Neon Sword. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. That was I was saying exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah, nicely helped by Crazy, actually. Um, we would love to see Neon Sword build. Tons of turrets right now, actually. Just he's at 3,000 minerals. Just build another CC in preparation for when you break out, and then once you have broken out, just you can just float the CC over. Right. Yeah. Th this was not this enough in the main. A... Oh, was there a drop in the main? Oh. Yeah. He he's did... moved from the sword. There is a strategy you can do um, if you're really behind. If you get a good doom drop on your enemy. <laughs> Like we're talking about like eight, oh, yeah. eight dropships, you can actually come back and win the game, but three dropships is not enough. You think, Oni? I've lost many TVTs from Doom Drops before. I have a siege contain and I'm feeling good and then I get Doom Drops and I... Yeah. Definitely, advise, definitely a very good strategy to try the Doom Drops. Right, yeah, but you, you need you need a lot more than like three dropships. That's, that's not enough. Uh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So yeah, when when all when all said and done, yeah, I mean, Crazy's still holding strong, you know. Uh, Neon Sword, mm -hmm. he took he took like you know a couple in, uh, a couple screens worth of like turf, but none of the turf yeah. he really took allows him to excuse me to establish another base. So I'd say Crazy is still far ahead. And, like Neon yeah, Sword, he's got, got that middle of the map. He's got the high ground in the middle of the map as well. He's able to take all of the top left side just freely. Yeah, he, he's basically able to expand everywhere, where, whereas Neon is contained. Again, I mean, Neon can do something with his dropships, but um, I don't even know where his dropships are. Okay, well, he's got... They're kind of they're kind of like spread around. He's got like three flying in the clump, one at like, one at the 4 o'clock, one in, in the high ground, right? He's got to load them up, the dropships up, and uh, move them together. Right. Really, only his, his only strategy should be to do another June drop, I think. But it looks like this is going to be a vulture drop instead. And if Crazy is seeing these dropships flying around, it's not a bad idea to build a hundred turrets, like ten turrets in each of your bases, because yeah, really you don't need all of those minerals as a turret. Just turtle really nice mine. drop coming in from two Neo Sword, actually taking out this uh, middle position. Yeah, this ground has um, has worth. It will allow him to like take another base if he can hold Definitely. it. He'll uh, be able to take his nine o'clock finally. He's he's gonna lose his base though in the four o'clock or the five o'clock. Oh, he's lost it again. Yeah. See, really, really difficult to to, to actually reinforce this position because it's so far away. 
Good scan coming in from Crazy as Neoso is trying to reinforce and looks like. Oh, one more tank shot. One tank still alive. Crazy is actually going to be able to establish this position here. But again, Crazy has the better economy for a very long time. Neo Sword really only mining on two bases. Or one base, really, once this third gets taken out. Yeah, well, it's a desperate fight for it. I mean, if he, if he can get some units out um, right now, and his macros are... Imagine if that 2k was all, like, units, right? Like, he definitely could have, like, cleaned, the, cleaned up yeah. the... Okay, wait, hold on. I thought... Looks like there's an attack coming in from Crazy. Looks like he's gonna try to break that... Uh, Oh, but if he filters in like this, he's not going to take an efficient fight at all. Yeah. He's going to lose the first two tanks that's going to come out. Uh, decent mines coming down from Crazy. Actually going to take out one of these tanks as well. Really nicely done. He, he's going to win. He might break it just by brute force. You know what I'm saying? Because he has got so much more yeah. like a better macro. But uh, it's, you don't want to be trading like this, right? It's really inefficient. Mm. He's bleeding units from tanks on the high ground. like. I think at this stage, um, Crazy should be feeling very comfortable to just sit back and macro up a really, really huge army and then just do one big final push as he's establishing his bases because his bases aren't really in any danger right now other than from the dropships. Right. Well, I mean, the dropships, they, they do pose a, like a risk. Like, it's like if, because there's four drops, like a, like a four dropship like attack. Right now in the main, like tanks and glides, I mean, it, it can do something, right? As long as you're clustered up together. But yeah. uh, aside from that, yeah, I mean, you should be safe. I think Crazy should be feeling comfortable. If you're feeling comfortable with TVT, that's when you just drop down a lot of turrets so that you can't ever be attacked by drops. Or if he does drop you, it's inefficient. But it looks like these uh, dropships from Neosol are actually going to go to the 12 o'clock base. And he's gonna actually get a free drop here as well. No turrets out for Crazy. Crazy, it might sound weird if you're coming from StarCraft 2, but building over amount of turrets is actually a good strategy in Brutal War. Yeah, especially in this matchup, uh, in this stage, right, what we're seeing right now. Yes, definitely. And you also wanna lay mines everywhere in your own bases as well, so in case they come in with like five dropships, you can just like, they all land oh, yeah. the mines, right, and blow up. You know, that, you know that old joke that people do where it's like, oh, this guy built 10 cannons in his main? This guy's good at brute war, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to play. Right. Like, if you see one turret to defend dropships, it's like, no, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. But if you see 20, it's like, yeah, he, he's, he's an S rank. All right, yeah, we see uh, Crazy trying to cut off uh, Neon Sword's uh... Like tanks, Neon trying to re-establish another base, and uh, I, I think he's gonna do it. Um, crazy. Oh yeah. I okay. You know, well, one thing about Crazy, like uh, I, I like his macro. I, I like how he's played it so far. But he, he, I think he could work a bit on his attacks. You know, they, they come in like yes. in a line. You know, I kind of feel like that's definitely. It's costing it. <clears throat> he does still have a good amount of bases. He's gonna be able to re-establish his twelve o'clock position once he takes the, all of these mines out, but. One of the things that you can do in TVT is you can win the game without fighting at all by just establishing nice positions and denying the opponent bases. You don't really have to kill the enemy's army. Yeah, I think Crazy is uh, being a little bit impatient. Knowing that he has the advantage, he wants to push it, but you don't have to do that in TVT. Also, it can be to your detriment as well. He's thrown away a lot of units. I don't know if you were yeah. watching yet. Like that, yeah, that, he's just thrown away four or five tanks there just to do nothing. Yeah, and then Neon is now... He's going to stop us a position. Like, I, I, I can't believe it. He's, yeah, like, if, if he cuts tanks? off these reinforcement paths with these mines, and if he's able to get tanks in there as well, he's going to be able to take out two bases for free. And then Crazy will be down to about one or zero mining bases soon. Really nice siege here from Neon Sword able to cut off this location and if he's able to reinforce quickly enough he's going to be able to get that really nice position between the second and third base yeah yeah that's like like i i really do think i mean i totally agree with you I, crazy got a bit impatient he, he, 
you don't actually have to attack them when you control like that much of the map. All you gotta do is sit yeah. there, right, Definitely. and reinforce your side and like maybe defend his drops. But, you know, one one thing about TVT is this though, like even if you don't have more bases than your opponent at the beginning, it's okay as long as you have a better position, which allows you to take more bases than than your opponent, yeah. right? It's all about it's all about real estate in TVT. Mm -hmm. If you have the superior positioning and you're able to defend against or a race transition or a drop transition, you will win the game just by sitting back. You don't even have to touch your keyboard, honestly. Yeah, and I mean, and like defending in TBT, you're, you're gonna like almost always you're gonna get a better trade because Terran is so defensive, right? Like, you're gonna lose more yeah. units attacking into into an entrenched Terran, right? Okay, we see Neil sort of actually pulling the trigger, unseizing his tanks that were defending his 9 o'clock position and trying to cut off <clears throat> Crazy's 12 o'clock bases. Is he going to be able to actually do it? Because he has plus 3 attack versus... Actually, we're even in upgrades now, sorry. Uh, yeah. None of them actually have any armor upgrades, but... Cra uh, Neil sort of has a really superior tank gun in this position right now. Yeah, again, I, I kind of feel a crazy... Okay, well, he's not really controlling his army the best, right? Uh, that's, no. That was the biggest thing that we saw here. And yeah, yeah. and now the 12 o'clock's in danger, the top left is in danger, right? Mm -hmm. If if Neon can take the, the 12 o'clock and top left, he will be up on bases. Like, again, real estate, right? If he can cut this off, he'll have like two more bases he can potentially take. Oh, yeah. And it looks like it's actually going to go into a very split map situation. But if Neon Sword is able to hold this position in the 12 o'clock that he has, he's going to be able to win the game. So this is the really crucial position to take right now. Look at the center he lost map. a lot of SCVs because of a Vulture run by by Crazy into the 9 o'clock position, but he can always rebuild, you know. You, patience with NTVT will always win the game. And a Crazy going for drop shots, but it doesn't look like it's going to be very efficient to trade here. Yeah, not enough units in that dropship to actually make a good impact. But yeah, Crazy is able to establish some siege line here. Yeah, I kind of feel like Neon is, um, but he, he's kind of, like, he's waste, like, um, he's got this siege line. The 12 is open, but he's not exploiting the fact that the 12 is open. Like, if he just ran in, like, units right now to the 12, no. yeah, yeah, at the top left, you could deny it. He's letting Crazy get away, like, slowly, oh no, he had sieged at the oh, worst. Oh, he just unsieged his tanks, and Crazy's gonna be getting, getting a really nice fight. Okay, Crazy's re-established his position here. He should be able to take out all these tanks, regardless of the high ground. If he's able to control correctly. Yeah. Oh! Decent siege. Actually, Neos are electing to target fire the SCVs. It would be more worth it to kill the army and then, like, and then, uh, re attack with the army. But, yeah. Still good good trades for, like, Neon. He got his money. Right out yeah, of that. And Neon army. actually sending the vultures finally to the top, uh, top left location. Getting a good amount of SCVs here. But, again, at this stage in the game, the SCVs don't really matter as much unless you're getting all of them. The uh, army is what's important right now. Well, I, I I wouldn't say that because these uh, like like they're they're not too high of an eco. They don't have too much of a bang. SCVs like don't really matter when like in the late game when you have like five k or something like that. But they they do count mm -hmm. still kind of ish right now because the, the eco is not the best for both these guys right now, right? Like even Crazy's got forty eight yeah. SCVs and Guns thirty eight. Yeah, actually, I agree. Crazy, um, if he's actually going to try for a 9 o'clock position, I don't think he should. He should just sit here on this high ground. This way, he'll be able to get top left. He'll be able to get the 9 o'clock base above Neon Sword's third as well, if he wants to. But actually, this siege might be the worst for him because the Neon Sword's going for a drop here. He's going to be able to retake this position, hopefully. Oh, you should never siege that closely if you are actually dropping on top of the army. Yeah, it's better just to go unseaged. Yeah, that was Definitely. a bit of a mistake. And actually, Crazy's gonna get free roam into the <coughs> Neon Swords base here. Into his fourth, where all the SCVs are. And get a lot of SCV kills. See, this is what Crazy should have done a little bit before, where he's taking better positions rather than trying to push down into Neon Swords' choke. Right. Yeah, looks like Neon's about mined out though. He's got like he's got no money. Yeah, his bottom six o'clock position is almost mined out, and his nine o'clock isn't able to mine at all right now. Right, doesn't even have the SCVs there. Like he's got a main arts and SCVs over. I don't know mm -hmm. from his uh, six to his nine. Yeah. 
I think Crazy's finally done it. I think he's yeah, done I it. I think Crazy is just sl slowly choking him out now. And again, in TVT, it is a game of patience. You don't have to push up that ramp if there's two tanks. Those two tanks can kill 10 tanks by themselves. Yeah, especially with mines in front, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a nightmare to, to get to them. Yeah, see, once Crazy has the position, which he does at the moment, he doesn't have to do anything. He can just sit, go downstairs, get a cup of coffee, and then come back. He would have won the game. <laughs> it's, yeah. TVT is weird in that sense, where if you're completely well defended, you don't really have to do anything. Yeah, and Neon taps go. out. Neon sort of tapping out. GG. That was 28 minutes, man. <laughs> that was half an I hour. I think it was a great TVT. Crazy played that out really nicely. In the mid game, he had some awful fights, but you know, controlling your army is difficult in in Brood Wars, So, I will give him that. But he did a really nice um, positioning game. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I do agree. It's just like you know, I'm not a fan of TVT. That's why. <laughs> not gonna <laughs> lie. I actually love TVT. TVT one of my favorite matchups to watch. Uh, very very fun. Yeah. Okay, getting into the next game here. And in the top right we have Doglude, our Zerg player. Yep, and left. in the bottom left we have Crazy. Man, I want to change their colors, bro, but like if when I hit shift tab, they both become yellow. Because you know it's like what's well, a green uh, versus olive? It's it's horrible. Yeah. Like this should be yeah, bad. Well as long as they're Starcraft different play. races, we should be able to differentiate. It's fine. Yeah, true, but I mean, on the minimap and stuff, like, the units look the same. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I'm... Dog Lift going for that dog color, you know? It's like a brown dog color. Very appropriate. Well, uh, hold on. Dogs come in all, all, all colors, man. You'd be like, they come yeah, basically you, all colors. If I say dog, you, you think like Labrador color, like a brownish color. So. Mm, actually, <laughs> I, I think of Golden Retrievers when you say dog. I think gold yeah, stuff. yeah, Labrador Golden Retriever. It's that kind of color that Dog has sporting right now. Well, I don't know. I've never seen the olive. I've never seen like he's olive, right? It's not green. Is that olive? I've never seen an olive. An olive dog. colored dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen an olive colored dog. But... <laughs> I think dogs are olive colored. Golden Retriever is olive colored, right? The golden Retrievers, no man. They they've got they're, they're golden. They have like a yellowish fur, right? That's why the golden yellow fur. That's why they're golden. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's close enough to being olive colored. <laughs> it's close enough, yeah. Close enough for me. I'm 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 slightly colorblind to be honest. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Then these colors will be very very difficult for you. Yes, sir. They are. Um, the olive I've, and the green. Yes, I, I have a red right. green deficiency actually. So. Oh, it's okay. I'll I'll help you out in the, <laughs> in the mini map. It's alright. Right. Okay, hatch refers coming out from Doglived. Yeah, standard 12 hatch coming out, right? Super yeah. standard. Uh, we'll see if he wants to go for a 3 hatchery or 2 hatchery play. I think lots of Zergs would prefer to play 2 hatchery right now, but considering that this is a international, completely international um, tournament, you have to consider how much lag you have, so the meters won't be perfectly controlled. Yeah, for for sure, right? Um, there there's like a well, I mean, I, I've heard different opinions from different like Zerg players, but some Zerg players say you know they won't go meters if it's like TR under TR twenty. Some say sixteen. TR sixteen is mm -hmm. an absolute like minimum. They're willing to like go yeah. meters, but yeah, at a point you know it it gets pretty hard to like you know TR eight extra high. It's a nightmare. Like the the meter glaze just won't fire. You know, it's like you're forced yeah. into lurkers, right? And it looks like um. Uh, Dogliv is opting for those quick gas, so it could be either two hatch muta, or we could try to do some shenanigans with lurker play as well. Yeah, but I think it, it'll be two hatch. I mean, either if he chooses like lurker or muta, three hatch is like you know, you know, it's you, you remember like you, can you still remember the last time you seen the Zerg do three hatch? It's like you know, back in my day, son, yeah. like they used to do three hatches. I mean, you still see it on ladder sometimes when uh, in in my rank because they're still uh, doing the easier builds than the two hatch plays, so. Right, and I think the reason um, what? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Okay, I think the reason why you see two hatch now it's so prevalent, and yeah, he is going to hatch. You see it, right? But uh, crazy yeah. sees it. Is that two hatch is, is harder to do because it requires if you get two hatch unit, it requires you to do more damage with the new list to mm -hmm. make it worth it. And I mean, it's all down to control, yeah. so it's a, a mechanically harder style to play, but it's it's so much better than three hatch, right? You like you know, mm. you know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, that's it's why so you much see better, it. but. Again, it's difficult. Yeah, it's harder to do. 
Yeah. And uh, Crazy should uh, should have known it was to hatch very, very long time ago. If he sees the gas go down very early, like we did, um, if you see the Zerg mining gas before three minutes, it is going to be a two hatchery play. Uh, one of the other things that you can look out for is once the spawning pool is done, does the Zerg start the lair immediately or a little bit later? Um, that's one of the mind games you can try with Zerg play, because if you start it immediately, it means there's no link speed. If you start it a little bit later, it means that he could have pushed link speed. Yeah, that's that's really important uh, to know as well, because um, there's several like link all-in builds the Zerg can do, right? If you're caught unaware, you can definitely die to it. Yeah. Um, I just want to mention like Crazy's build. He actually went 15 CC, so he went like a barracks right with the 15th SCD mm -hmm. the command center. And he got away with it, so this is a really, really yeah. good eco build. Uh, I think once he saw the 12 hatch, he's like, yep, I can make my CC on the low ground. Yeah. And get as much economy as I can. Yeah. Uh, you can see Crazy doing the standard uh, 2 barracks academy build, which is the standard build against uh, 2 hatch replay. Yeah. Well, what that faster see... Engineering C coming down correct time as well. Really nicely done. Right, yeah, because the mute is like, when, when, when did it get here? Uh, like what, like 2 hatch? Right, almost 6 minutes, like 5... 5.30, I think. Yeah, yeah, 550, 540, right? Well, I mean, yeah. given travel time as well, right? Like by the time they actually get oh, to yeah. Place, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention the the faster command center. It's really great because I, it allows you to skip one depot, right? Mm, it yeah. allows you to skip one depot. So Everything just feels so much smoother. Right, yeah. Ooh, four medics. Will be interesting. <clears throat> yeah, that is quite interesting. I think... It is a bit of an oversight, I think, from Crazy. He should have more Marines than Medics right now. But <laughs> he seems to have more Medics, first of all. Yeah, um, should be seeing turrets going down very, very soon. There we go. Once the engineering's finished. Yeah. He's got to start building, building them in his natural. Um, uh, I think we missed it a little bit, but Crazy actually gets a free SCV scout early on as well, which is a really nice play from him. And he's going to be able to see the third location going down for Dog Lived as well, with just this one SCV. This SCV is quite MVP today. Yeah. Uh, yeah and he, the he, first mute is coming out. We'll see how great uh, Dog Live Muter Control is. Huge mistake by Crazy. Yet. No, no turrets in the natural. Really delayed. He's getting one now. Oh, get two. yeah. That is really delayed. Okay. Uh, we'll see if where Dog Live wants to hit first with his first five meters. But it looks like he's um, taking his time. Taking out this SCV first, so this SCV has bought a lot of time, gotten a lot of scouting info as well. Yeah, that like, that was definitely the MVP SCV. If, if he went Gets straight see... away, yeah, it would be a lot better. Mm -hmm. All right, we have eight meters coming out for Doglift now. Should be able to see a ninth coming down as well. Let's take a look at this first round of micro from the Zerg player. Oh, that medic is quite out of position. Oh, good save from Crazy. And there are only two tyrants here. If Doglift is able to mark her correctly, she should be able to get a good amount of SCVs, but he's electing not to. And again, even if you're not the greatest control with Mutalists, you don't have to actually commit to try to kill SCVs. You can try to just put pressure on the turn. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. yeah, taking a lot of... Uh... Taking some damage, getting bruising a few middleists. Yeah, you can see that dog lived probably not uh, putting his um, middle micro first priority. He's just getting uh, hydralisks and lurker aspect as well. So he was just wants to transition instead of going into middleists. A little bit of a poke in here from dog lived, but a little bit too many turrets from crazy to be able to actually do any damage. Yeah, um, I'm. I think I, I think dog lived. The, He's got to get more more damage done with the, with his mutilus. I mean, this is not yeah. enough, right? To justify. Oh, uh, he actually uh, mispositioned with his mutilus very much there, and he's going to be in quite a lot of danger on his third base location here. Lurker aspect is not done, so they can't turn into eggs right now. He's going to try and save this base up on the ramp. Really nice control coming in from Douglas, trying to abuse that high ground, but it looks like it's just too much for crazy. Douglas can still muster his way out of this if he sees some good muter micro. There's only four marines here. Oh, going down to four muters. I don't think this can be held properly. No, he's, he's gonna hold it because he had the sunken oh. only, but 
I mean, he bled a lot of Mutalisk, which he didn't have to. Um, not the best yeah. control, to be honest. Uh, I think once Crazy comes out with his second group of Marines, he should be able to take uh, map control here. The Lurker aspect is done. It's about six Lurkers making in the natural. Should be seeing some being transferred over to his third location as well, hopefully. Right. Yeah, Lurkin's on a ramp, right? <laughs> mm. One of the hardest things to do. I think Crazy make. still has a good timing to try and bust the third base before the Lurkers get there, but he's electing just to stay in his base for now. Uh, well, I mean, he's got to be careful, though. He's got to be careful, though, because sometimes like, if, if you attack the third like, with your initial group, the Zerk can sneak, like, uh, old Lurkers behind, right? Mm, definitely. Yeah, it, it, it's so, really dangerous. Yeah, he's going to elect to wait for his vessels to come out first and get those standard three tanks before he pushes out. Yeah, he's definitely Makes extra time. bunkers here, just for safety. Yeah. Just in case of a lurker rolling. Yeah, or, or like a backstab, right? Like when your arm moves out, the, the Zerg comes in, right? And if you have like mm. some bunkers there, it could be the difference between winning and losing. Really nice scans coming out from Crazy. Able to see the uh, hive timing as well. Yep. Okay. Looks like the game is going to die down just a little bit. Yeah, first vessel coming out. Yeah, he's doing exactly what you what you said, Danny. For um, crazy, he's going to get those like uh, the triple tanks. He's going to wait for the vessel, right? And then he's going to make a timing. Hopefully, he can punish yeah. the zerg before the the filer comes out. That's what he's looking for. Right? The hive is just about finishing now, so there is a good amount of time for crazy to push out on the map before the filers are out. And remember, everyone, defilers need to research consume before they can do anything. So crazy has a lot of time. Um, before the file is out for him to express himself on the map right now. And the first vessel is about to finish, so that should be the uh, time when he starts to push up this ramp. But really nice spread of lurkers coming out from Dog. I love this. Okay, so the first vessel is going to come through. Control is really important here from Crazy. He doesn't want to lose many Marines going up this ramp. Should be seeing a siege coming down now. Well, you don't have to siege. Um, you can because the tanks outrange the, the lurker. You can just like lead with your tanks and your uh, vessel. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of backstab coming in from Doglib. Really nice move with these four lurkers. Is he gonna go to the natural or just? Oh, okay. This He's is cut off reinforcements. Nice and sneaky. Yeah. Oh, be careful. Dog gonna try and bite. Oh, the science vessel goes down to the first two scourge. Really nicely done from Doglip. But it looks like Crazy just has way too many units. And let's look, look at the reinforcements. These four lurkers are gonna take out all of the reinforcements coming out from Crazy. Wow, really nice move. But again, let's try to see if Doglip can hold his uh, front natural position with these six lurkers. Not enough links to actually be able to do any damage, but these six lurkers can do a lot. The scan comes down, two lurkers coming from the back, one of them gets taken out, and the links flooding in now, but I don't think that's quite enough. The green count is really high still. There's two, still two lurkers back, and they're gonna get taken out, and I think the natural is gonna be up about busted to the dog lived. Yeah, oh, no. Okay, there was a lot of words. <laughs> no, um, the Defiler Man was never started for dog lived. Oh really? That's huge. Must have panicked us a little bit. Yeah, that, that that that's that's really huge, man. Like, oh, he's got a burl, burl, oh. burl. Really nice lurker egg on the ramp, but all those lurkers get taken out, and there's two lurkers remaining here. Let's take a look at the reinforcement. I think Crazy has stopped reinforcing because he realized that his marines were getting killed. Yeah, yeah. He and wisely. don't think he's still gonna survive. But it doesn't look good for him. There's no Defiler's Intuition. Um, he doesn't have a fourth base or a fourth gas. His local count is low. Yeah, I, I think what we're gonna do is like look. It's gonna be like a repeat of last time, you know. But this time, like, because you see, crazy, he's just remacked the same army and uh, with the with, with the vessel. So he's gonna do the exact same thing and like just try to push into Doglib's um main. But this time, as you yeah. said, Doglib will just have less lurkers to deal with it, right? Okay, looks like Doglib is setting up another backstab here. 
Oh, I think it's a flank. He did work out last time. Okay, he's actually just going to try and reinforce his army position. Flank. I don't think that he can actually fight this. Skirt's coming in, trying to kill the vessel. Really nicely done from Crazy saving the vessel. Oh, but really, these five lurkers saving the day for Doglip. So he's able to buy some more time, but really, what for? He doesn't have the tech coming quite yet. Yeah, he, like we, we need to see that to Fowler then. We need, we need to see. We need it to come down or else like... um. Like crazy is just gonna like he's just gonna come out again and again with these armies, right? And he's gonna eventually mm. yeah, like, definitely. one of them is gonna work, it's gonna beat the Zerg. Okay, crazy actually is just gonna like to walk around this position. I like this from crazy. Actually, Dog Live, you need to run back home with these lurkers, I think. You have a lot of lurkers, which is great, but you need them in the correct position. So actually crazy is gonna get a really nice position here, but Doglift might be able to get a really good surround Ooh, if he's able to control his units perfectly, but he's filtering in them in one by one. And all these lings are actually going to suicide in for free, I think. Uh, nice little maneuver from Crazy. Now, uh, okay, Doglift now bringing back his lurkers to try and defend his natural. He's going to be able to cut off the back of uh, Crazy's army, which is really nicely done. I think that Doglift is going to hold one more time. But again, he's bought the time, but he's not spending his time correctly by taking up with the fathers quite yet. Yeah, I mean, like th this is really good for Doctor. Like, kudos for him to holding for holding off like Terran army after Terran army. But I mean, without higher tech, he, he can't win. You know, that, that's that's what I'm trying to get. And you can see like Crazy's taking his own third already. Right? He's he's now on an even basis with his third. Yeah. I think uh, Doglif feeling a little bit pressured and feeling a little bit desperate. Slipping up on his uh, tech right now, which is really understandable because he was under a lot of pressure and he's trying to go for some uh, Lurker Ling all in play from here. Right. Dog oh, complaining it about does the look like the lag is um, disrupting his play. And the Defiler Mine finally goes down now. Right. I, I really like to see another base. Imagine if we had this mound. Um, a long time before, you know. Yeah, like five minutes ago. Yeah, like he he, he could he, he might have like won if it was like five minutes ago. He can just swarm into like the main with the yes, amount of lurkers. Okay, has. Doglip actually gonna go for another lurker <clears throat> attack here, but it doesn't look like it's gonna work this time. This looks like to be the last fight, perhaps. But again, Doglip doing a really nice job controlling his army, fending off the Terran. Oh, and he just taps out from here. Very unfortunate. I think the lag was getting to Doglyph's head a little bit there, forgetting his Defiler Mound, but he was doing a really nice job with his Lurkers. Yeah, well, m maybe that's why, like, maybe that's why, like, the uh, the Muta Micro didn't seem that good. Maybe it was because of the leg, right? Like, maybe maybe the leg really affecting him. Yeah, like, I definitely it is, agree. It's, it's really yeah, hard. To, it's really hard to Micro in leg, man, like, like Muta Micro. I yeah. don't know if you ever tried, but it's really hard. I mean, we don't know if what lag that was, but if it was TR8 or TR10, it's... Really, it's unfortunate for the Zerg side because it's very, very difficult to micro your mutants. Right. Okay. Into the next game, we have on the top right our pink Protoss player, Dibutis. And in the bottom left, we have our green Terran, Crazy. What did you think of uh, Crazy's? game from last game in TVZ. Did you like the way he played? Yeah, I think TVZ? Yeah, I think he uh he played a like you know, he played a pretty solid game. Like he knew he knew what he was doing. Like he, he did he had the correct response, you know, getting like the faster command center after seeing the scout, uh, getting the turrets to defend, you know, uh, like yeah, he, he played I would say it was a pretty good game. Yeah, I think all of his um responses and decision making were excellent. You know, early on as you said, he got the at least 15 or 16 CC after getting the scanner. Um, he saw that it was two hatch meter going for the correct uh, two barracks academy build. And uh, once it got later into the game, he was constantly scanning for the hive deck as well, trying to find his correct timings. And we also had that MVP SCV early on, able to get all the scouting information off. Yeah. yeah I, I think. Um... Well, like to be fair, I mean, I think Dog Lived also made the right calls. Um, he he just didn't get that like the Fowler Den like a follow. Yeah, I think it was just uh, slipped his mind that game, unfortunately, yeah, because he was forgot. dealing with a lot of pressure. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it's easy for us to judge again. Like, I mean, since since we're you know we're watching the replay, right? Uh, but when you're actually mm. playing, you know, there's a million yeah. things you have to do, and it's so easy to forget something. I've definitely forgotten yeah, definitely. so many things myself, right? Uh, made tons of mistakes myself before. Yeah. No, but I think Dogliff played a really nicely defensive game, even with the lag. He was able to save that first attack on the third base, and he was able to hold off about two or three pushes against the Terran as well. Yeah, like that. That's one big thing, like for for Dogliff, like the fact that he was able to like crush so many like technologically advanced Terran armies. You know what I mean? With yeah. with only what he had, you know, it was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. right. And he was able to do that. Um, Really nice backdoor move with the four lurkers, killing all the re reinforcements from Crazy. Otherwise, sure. I think he definitely would have lost the game right then and there if he didn't do that move. Yeah, for sure. All right, we see um, Crazy playing uh, super standard Terran, super, super, super standard Terran. Right? You can see Sim City as well. He's gonna get his factory. He pulled off gas at I want like 88 or 80. That was correct. I think he pulled off at 80, right? Yeah, um, 88, I think. Yeah, and um, I love the Sim City from uh, Crazy. This is the favorite one I, I go for as well. Yeah, it's it's really good. You have two spaces where you can put Marines in, right? You can run mm. them back and forth. Uh, over on the Protoss side, we also have a super, super, super standard game. I mean, look, look, I mean, look at this man. Like Dragoon first, core, Dragoon range, right? Yeah, and it's actually nice. We'll be able to see a slightly different flavored PVT coming out, since it uh, they are different players as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think in Mr. Chill's PVT was more um, specialized builds, you know, I guess you could call it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. A little more on the um, tech heavy side rather right, than the macro right. side. Yeah. yeah like, like, and you can see um, Crazy doing a really nice job leaving his SUV. Once he sees the core, just leave the base and uh, you can poke back in later to see the Nexus timing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like there, There's nothing really more to see when you see like... Uh, well, okay, what you really want to see is like it's like three pylons and the core spinning in Dragoon, right? But it, barring that, if you can't see it because the Dragoon comes out first, like, it's better just to hide your speed and come back in maybe like 350 and then like see if the Nexus is down at a time, right? Because the Nexus mm -hmm. timing and like how much health it has by the time you scout it, it can tell you a couple things, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. And it looks like uh, the booties, this was a two goon expand. Yeah, uh, we should be able to see Crazy send his SCV. Oh, just as I say, he's gonna send it in now. Um, you want to see the Nexus if it's down at before four minutes and twenty seconds. If it's not up at four minutes and twenty seconds, then it's some sneaky, sneaky build from from the Protoss. He's actually mm -hmm. gonna get into the main as well since the two goons are out on the map. Yeah, he he was actually searching for Crazy's um like uh, SCVs. He sent them to the twelve. But, uh, mm -hmm. Crazy just yeah. sent it behind. Yeah, so Crazy's gonna see everything. And it's gonna be one gate robo, super standard, right? Three dudes, one gate robo, super mm. standard. So we can either see Crazy go for engineering bay here to defend against the reavers, or the booties can choose not to do any reaver play since it was scouted and just go straight into three gate ops as well. Yeah, I, I don't know if um if Crazy saw it. I think he might have saw it. That's why he's going like second factory and then no engineering bay uh, because. Uh, Dibuti did put down another gateway, so I don't know if like the SCV saw it on the way out. If you see two gates and then like Robo, right? Like yeah, it's not gonna be like you don't have to worry about like really quick reavers, right? You can get like Goliath actually yeah. pretty fast. I think he saw the Robo, but not the second gateway. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I'm not quite sure myself as well. But crazy being completely safe here from ending early harass, and um, we'll see if he goes for an academy here. With this SCV, no, just another deeper. Yeah, uh, he's gonna do fact CC fact. You see how he's building up his marine council. He's gonna get three tanks. He's gonna get mine research. Yeah, and then he's gonna push uh, across the map. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna do the push again and get his two vultures out of the map, just as we saw before. I think. Yeah. I think no, you're right. He's gonna try to end the game. Oh, he's got so many. Oh marines. no, he's going to end the game. Yeah. Or, or maybe if not end the game, he's gonna at least try to do some damage. Like he's he's looking mm. to do some uh, good damage, but. The booties did go like triple gateway, which is again, this is like super standard, man. This is like textbook Protoss, right? The most standard yeah. build you can do. So the booties should be able to hold this, right? Because his observer is uh, going to be here. I would have loved to see the booties out on the map first. Okay, he's going to come out now. He needs to delay the push and pick off units as they come across. But, yeah. That's a good pick off on the first. Oh, but loses the dragoon. That's not great. And the SCV actually blocking the goon a little bit as well. Really nicely done. Yeah, body blocking. 
Yeah, he, he gave up two high grounds so like, like, with the uncontested, you know what I mean? Like, there's two mm. places where you could hold the high ground, but he... Okay, I'm kind of surprised. Like, what, what? Crazy could have pushed this. This is only five Dragoons. He could have broken it. Look at what he has. Yeah, I think he definitely could have tried, but he elects to go for a safer option. He just wants to get a little bit of map control here with the Vultures, but it doesn't look like he's going to get any because the Observer's out already anyway. And Dabuti's actually playing it safe because he doesn't know where the tanks are. So he's just being a little bit wary of a run by or any of the siege tanks on the high ground. Right. Well, he has an observer, so he will be able to find out. I, okay. I, mm. I, I really, I, I think this is a mistake from Crazy. He could have ended the game, but a little bit better, like with some control. Like he could have just pushed in there and like sieged like the natural, right? I mean, granted, it is a risk, but uh, I felt no, he could I, have done it. I agree. It. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it, it it does come down to that control. So if he's not confident of the control and he just wants to get his vultures out on the map, then I think both options are fine. But I think definitely a more aggressive turn would have killed the Protoss out right there. Right. And uh, yeah, it looks like Crazy is going he is going to follow up with uh, uh, factory timing, right? You can see four factories coming up. He's probably going to add a fifth and a sixth. Uh, and yeah, he's yes. out. yeah, this looks like it's going to be six factories in total. Yeah, one armory plus really one. Really nice timing on the fa factories as well. Seven minutes and 40 seconds is about the time that you want to get your six factories if you are wanting to do that timing. So really nicely done from Crazy. Great execution. Yeah, so this is the the vaunted uh, six pack plus one build, right? Mm. Like, really scary to deal for the Protoss. If he's able to get the Observer into the main and see it, he should be able to make more gateways afterwards. Because he is on four, five is going down now, and he's going to add up to six or eight gateways, I suppose. I think. Yeah, you really want like like nine. Okay, what you want? What what was the rule of thumb? It's like. You, you want at least like two or three more gates than the Terran has factories or something like that, mm. right? By virtue yeah. of the factory units being so strong. And we should be seeing one more gateway coming down from the booties, hopefully. He is going for Stargate for some reason, but I don't see a Citadel. There is one at the natural. Citadel oh, and Arcanus. it's at the natural, yeah. Okay, the Templar. Okay, so he's going for Arbiters as well at the same time. Um, but he's doesn't still know that there's a push coming. Okay, he does see the observer with it, with the push with the observer now, but he doesn't see the factory count quite yet. And we'll see how the control is from Crazy this time. He does have siege mode. He's got a siege now. Okay, here we go. Really nicely dies. You have to get a couple good shots off. Yep. And yeah, the pulling back. As the Terran, you don't want to look for fights right now. You just want to look for positions at the moment. So he's leapfrogging his tanks across the map right now, really nicely done. And the crucial tech for two Dibutis to come out right now is the Zealot Legs, which is about to finish. He's also taking it to Arbiters at the same time as well. He could add more gateways if he wanted to, but since he's spending his money on the Arbiter tech, it doesn't look like he can afford it quite yet. A huge mistake from Crazy. He, he got supply blocked. I don't blame him. There's so many things to oh, do. Oh yeah, 92 of 92. He's just it getting doesn't... a deep like depots now. Like in in with these like two base timing pushes, you never want to get supply blocked because you want to keep on like, like uh, reinforcing, right? Yeah. Bank in 1k. Okay. Plus one is done for the Terran. These are good mines going down as well, and it looks like he's building the engineering bay for the turrets that will come down eventually. Tiburis is doing a really nice time buying time uh, for either his Arbiter tech or, he, yep, Arbiter going down now, and Stace is coming out first as well, and the shuttle as well. He's doing a really nice job uh, teching, but he's not building any units quite yet, Tiburis. Your gateways are all inactive, mate. Yeah, you, you, you oh, can't. he's gonna lose the first shuttle as well. Ooh, not the greatest execution there. You can't miss a beat when you're trying to deal with like uh, these two back, uh, two turn, you know, two base like pushes. No, definitely. Yeah, it you looks gotta, like. Yeah, no, go ahead. You got to be on point with your macro, you know, or else yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, it looks like Davidis is pulling the trigger now. Uh, I don't know if he should have waited for another gateway round, but it doesn't look like he's gonna get anywhere because of these mines. And where is the observer for? Okay, there's one here and one here, but they're not over the mines, really. Yeah, 
And Crazy has gotten himself into an excellent position in between the second and third base for Dibutis. I think right now Dibutis should be waiting for one more Zealot round and his Arbiter to come out. Should yeah. give him a lot of utility. Yeah, his uh, Arbiter's... Yeah, it's... It's, I mean, it's almost done. Um, yeah, at this point, I, I think, yeah, just wait for a couple of Zealot rounds and Arbiter and then uh, try to break out. Uh, but at the same time, mm. Crazy is getting awfully close to natural. I mean, when shells yeah, are... Yeah, this... So go ahead, Fed. Yeah, and this does get very, very scary for the Protoss. It doesn't feel good when you're on the receiving end of these kind of pushes. You feel very pressured to come out at the wrong timing, but it looks like he's been very patient, waiting for the round of Zealots to come out. Okay, this looks like to be the best time for him to actually try this. Mm, and the Zealots are actually going to get on top of a couple of the tanks in Mind Drag, but all of these goons are dying to these tanks very, very quickly, and the Vulture reinforcements are here as well. Great mine placements coming out for Crazy as well. Okay, he's closing in on the natural location. And GG is called for the duties. Yeah, I think... Yeah, it was. I don't know. It, it was uh, that was a really, really classic six pack plus one. You know, uh, the booties just uh, couldn't keep his macro up. You know, to defend it and uh, mm. yeah. And I think one of the biggest things that Crazy did really well was the those mine placements right in front of the tanks. The goons can't touch the mines because the observers can't get there because of the turrets. And if zealots come in, they blow up before they can even get on top of the tanks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, well played by uh, Crazy. Yeah, excellent execution. I think, um, who's, who's the Protoss player? Um, uh, Dibutis? Yeah, I think Dibutis also played it really well. He was very patient as to not lose any economy at that point. He didn't lose his third base or his natural. And he went for the fight when he thought it was best uh, for him. But just wasn't enough. Uh, anyway, in the top right location of this match, it is Dibutis in the purple Protoss. And in the bottom left, we have the white Zerg Dokle. Oh. This will be the last series, by the way. There's only one more game after this one, so... Oh, okay. Oh. I think um, we've seen all of Crazy's games, I think. I think he's... Um, I think he's also 3 and 1, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's... That, that was all of Crazy's games. Um, uh, just, uh, just a note, though, like, not, not all the replays for this group were submitted. And not, mm. not all the guys actually played, like... Um, older matches, right? So there's also that. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so the second PVZ of today, we saw Chill's PVZ uh, go into a cannon rush after a gate first. A failed cannon rush at that, but he was still able to clinch it out with some excellent probe micro. We'll see if Dibuti wants to go for a gate first here as well. It looks like it's going to be um, Forge first, actually. Yeah. Um... Or I'm mixing the two around. There's like a thing that you can tell with Protoss players. If they send the probe back to mine, it's either gate or forge first. I think I'm remembering incorrectly. It is forge, forge first. first. Okay. Yeah. If you leave the probe at the natural, it's gate first. And then if you tell the probe to mine, it's forge first for some reason. I'm not sure why, but apparently that's the tell. I didn't know that. That's another thing learned. Yeah. Oh, it looks like it's going to be... um. It was uh, overpool here from yeah, it's Doglip. Overpool. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, the booties is gonna be fine, you know. Forge first against overpool. He's gonna see it, right? Oh, oh, oh this is gonna be mm. so annoying. Is he gonna do it? Is he... Oh no. no he's okay. opting to get that he information. Not to. Oh, no, actually, Doglip was actually sending his um, drone further out on the map just in case some locking happened, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah. Yeah, I know some players, like some Protoss players, they love to like block the natural, and it, it's it's so good, you know. It, it, it's so annoying mm. <laughs> for Zerg to have to deal with that. Definitely, one worker micro is one of the things that you do have to learn in Brick War. Yeah, all right, Dibuti's got to pay attention now with his probe. He's got to see what comes out of the eggs, right? So he can have a proper <laughs> response. Cannon going down. Okay, that's good. Looks like it's just going to be two links early on, just to be able to chase the probe around and keep. Dog, uh, uh, the booty's busy. Earlier. Yeah, and keep him in the uh, dark. Two of the wings are actually going to go go out on the map just to force a cannon from the uh, proto side. Otherwise, you're giving too much room for the protos if you're not sending anything, and they can just do whatever they want. Right. Scouting information is so important in this matchup. I mean, in all matchups, scouting. Oh, he lost it. Yeah. Bit of a mistake from the booty's actually losing that first probe. It's going to feel a little bit uncomfortable for him now. I think. 
Yeah. Uh, well, as I was saying, like scouting is so important in every matchup, but especially in Cold House versus Zerg, because Zerg has so many different like strategies they can do, right? Uh, that if if you're not prepared for it as Protoss, then you can lose straight out. I mean, all matches are like that, but in ZVP, it is the most heavily like um, information heavy like uh, match. That you really have to know as Protoss what the Zerg is doing, because depending on what the yeah. Zerg is doing, every single response is different, right? Yeah. And they, are, and they are so different as well. Like, the, the different text that you have to go is too different. Yeah, yeah, that, exactly. Yeah, that's the point I was trying to yeah. make. Like the, like it's, it's very, very sensitive on the amount of information that you get in this matchup. Right, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you can see the booties. I think he was trying to get another probe out, but he was kind of like, um, Doglib was watching it, so he kind of like rejected his... Uh, <laughs> he, mm. he kept the probe back in. So, at this rate... Hopefully we see a core going down. Okay, the core does go down now. Yeah, that core was late, man. I don't know. Yeah, it's very, very late, late, unfortunately. He's floating a lot of gas because of that as well, I think. Yeah, like, it, it seems like um, the only way the booties is going to get information is if he opts for a Stargate and gets Corsair, you know, really, really like, standard, right? He's going to have to wait yeah. for his Corsair to come and scout uh, what the Zerg is doing, right? So this is really playing in the dark right now, and uh, yeah, Doglift really... Uh, you could be you could be doing anything, right? You could be doing anything. Yeah, right if, if you're in Debuti's position, it feels very very uncomfortable. Right. I'm not sure why. It uh, could be Hydra. It could be Muta. It could be any of these things. It could be a million links, sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. But uh, I guess he would know though, because it's there's no speed on the link. Right? He would know it's like, well, no. it's speed yeah, no that's definitely true. Um, I'm kind of surprised Dogleaf didn't like uh, leave his Overlord in like uh, uh, Debuti's base longer, right? Because you mm. can you can fly it away when you see like the core like finishing all that right. So he's kind of yeah, like, in a dark as well himself, right? Looks like there's another overlord in twelve court location. Just checking for a any flight paths or ninja expos as well. Right. Yeah. But, well, the the thing is like if if you're Zerg, okay, like in like the Protoss can be going like um, you know they're just gonna build. It's like you go like Citadel and it's like four four gates or something with speed. It's a time, right? Oh yeah. 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 And you don't get Stargate, so like not have Doglive not having his Overlord in Protoss base, he's, he's kind of like playing the dark as well. But uh, oh, the booty is actually gets in a probe and gets to see everything in inside Doglive base. Yeah, this is huge. He sees the spire. Um, but I don't think this will be Mutas though, because Mutas you want to like, correct me if I'm wrong, but you want to bank up more gas, so you you would get a second geyser, right? It was like... Yeah, I think if you saw a second geyser, geyser, it w it would be. Um, Middleist, but I don't think it's going to be Middleist. You should be seeing a Hydroden go down soon, then. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm just waiting for the Hydroden to come down. Um, one, two, three, four. So, so we do see five five hatches. So I do yep. you think it should be Hydroden, and it probably will be in the natural to form some kind of a Sim City. Yeah. So Evo Chamber on the third base going down for some Sim City as well. Yeah. And Where is there's the Hydroden, as you just said. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah so First Corsair coming out. Gonna kill that first overlord. Uh, because Tiburi's got that scout in with the probe, which was a really nice move, he doesn't have to send the Corsair across the map, he can just take his time to kill the first overlord and then send it across. Yeah, yeah. But it looks like he's gonna either bank the Corsairs or look for another overlord in his base. Yeah. No, I don't think you wanna really bank them at this stage. Like, you want them out, out and about scouting at least, right? Trying to hunt down mm. overlords. Um, Looks like the booties is a, is a bit a uh, bit worried about Mutalis. You can see he's going cannons, which I don't yeah. think is the right call. No. I mean, he he definitely saw the gas count, <clears throat> but I, maybe he was worried because he didn't see a hydrogen. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe he's he thought it ultra safe. he thought like, oh, the the den is at the at the at the third, or maybe he's got a second gas, but it's at the third or something. Right, he's trying to like, trick me out. It actually is like Muta's or something like that, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that could have been a possibility. I heard a scourge connect. Oh really? Oh, just one, just one. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna get intercept. He's got two. No. Oh, actually, Doglift doesn't pay attention there. He could have gotten that close here. He... Oh, actually, does get it eventually. <laughs> Gets it anyway. Uh, the... Okay. Beauties should have uh, ran away a little bit further. Uh, we see a little bit of Sim probe trapping Sim City, but he didn't actually trap a probe in there. Uh, what you can do is the same thing with Middleist. You can trap a probe 
uh, in your main base behind the mineral lines, and that will allow your Corsairs. And he just lost his second Corsair, which is unfortunate. <laughs> uh, that allows the Corsair to be able to clump much more better. Uh, we see the first attack coming out from the Zealots. It's going to be nine Zealots, first of all. Yeah, it's a timing Depending attack. Depending on where he goes, he could be successful. And plus one so leg's it done. Looks like Doglid is, Doglid is very, very defended. Yeah, it doesn't look like he can get anything done here. Right, yeah, yeah. It, it was a good timing from Dibuti though. You notice how like legs finish and plus one finish at almost the same that's almost uh, at the same time, right? Mm, definitely. Okay, he's actually gonna commit our okay, no, he's gonna run away. Definitely shouldn't come in, into this location. But you can see just by moving out he's forced um uh, deserved to feel a little pressure, uh, to build extra sunkens, build extra hydras than he might have wanted to. And if you don't do the push out, Zerg is just going to build more drones, gonna be like, okay. I'm just going to do whatever I want instead of uh, defending any of my locations. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, how Zerg has played this, you know, Zerg is, it, it's it's a non-stop struggle it, it, of balance, right? Between, like, how many drones can I get away with making before I can make, like, uh, like you know, uh, army units, right? If you're, if you're opting for that, right? It's it's always, like... Yeah. Yeah, because, because of how the Zerg race works, right? Like, the buildings require drones and all that, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it's one of the things that um, Snow was saying about Bisu, why Bisu is one of the best PvZers is because he does these weird things some games. In, in the best of three series, he might send three Zealots early on, and then in the next game, he will send three Zealots and then just come home. And then the Zerg would have overspent on Lings or Sunkens, and then the Bisu just kind of ekes out advantages in that way. And that's kind of the beauty of PvZ, really, is those kind of subtleties. The attack by a uh, doglift, maybe thinking to punish the third, but uh, oh, he's gonna get all these hydras here if he's able to pick them off. Gets one, gets the second one. Decent storms coming out from Dibutis, but he's actually gonna get all three Templars. Oh, that's really bad for Dibutis. Yeah, that, that that was pretty huge. Um, Templars are the siege tanks of the Protoss army in PvZ, like <laughs> they, <laughs> do the, they do the heavy <laughs> lifting. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That's a good one. Yeah, you can't be getting your Templar account reset. And they were like, they were the, the old ones. I mean, the old ones obviously have more energy. We got like three more new ones, but the, they got one storm apiece. But again, mm -hmm. it takes time, right? For them to build up energy. Can right? we see a Dark Templar? Maybe going to go deny the fourth, you think? It's like going up. Oh, yeah. This could actually cancel the hatchery if he wants to. There are no overlords, and overload speed is not done. So he could definitely take this out yeah. or force a cancel. What, what, what is the Reverse pneumatized one. carapace or something? No, it's yeah, done. Yeah, pneumatized carapace. Oh, it is done. Yeah. Oh, there we go. The Overlord is speeding his way through. Is he actually going to get it? No, I don't think he's going to get it. What, what is the... One uh, more swipe? One more swipe? Oh. <laughs> okay. What is Doglift upgrading for the Overlords at the lair? Is that a... That, that's, that's not... Um, that's not Ventral Sacks, right? That's not the... The um, drop. Is that well, the vision? That's the only other one, right? This is, this is Overlord drops. There's oh. no way he's researching sight range. Yeah, I'm not saying is this sight range or venture. I, I kind of yeah, no. yeah. I kind of forgot what the what it looked like, right? The thing, so it doesn't really mm, tell you. No, I think it's definitely venture oh. sacks. Oh. And straight after that, he's going into the hive. Right. I just realized I, I could have taken a look at the top left. Right, what it told me because it tells you like evolve like. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so the booty is coming out with his. Uh, second push of the game. Actually, he could have had six Templars, but he's down to three Templars for this push. That's one of the big impacts that that could have. That's game changing. And we'll like, see. Yeah, we'll see how well Doglip is able to hold. This is a really big clump of Hydras. If he's able to get a good storm off here, he's going to be able to win. Oh, that's an excellent storm from the Brutus. And the second one is not too bad either. But there's Hydras on the low ground <clears throat> trying to pick off these Templars. And all of the Zealots actually do go down. So it wasn't quite enough for the Brutus. Yeah, this was cleaned up like by the Zerg, uh, pretty pretty handedly, and uh, I you, you can't lose the Protoss armies like this. Um, it, it's just that like it, it, it it's it's like it's like Terran versus Protoss, you know, in in the sense that like the Protoss is the Terran now, you know, like you you, you can't you can't lose your entire army like like that in, in this game, you know, like Zerg can yeah, yeah. It, it's just how the matchup works. Like Zerg can more readily um, reinforce and replace their armies. Than Protoss can, right? Oh, and um, can, uh, you have your replay time showing. Oh, really? Um, oh, shoot! I keep yeah. forgetting, man. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Yeah, it's all right. We'll we'll get the overlay working next time. 
uh, we promise, guys. And this is a preseason match, so we're still working out some kinks. I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah. Because I, see, um, cause I suck at screaming. Imagine if we had uh, nine Templars at the moment instead of three. Imagine if we had all those Zealots as well. Oh. So really a big reset on the Poros army right now. And actually these Overlords are full of units right now. If they do get caught by these Dragoons, but it doesn't look like, oh, this is really unfortunate. The Brutus just misses these Overlords. But there's a lot of cannons in the third base, which can protect against these drops. And he's actually going to lick not to uh, drop his Overlords oh, right this now. this is huge. His army is going to get intercepted. Oh, yeah, he's gonna lose a lot of these overlords if he's not careful. Decent storm. Uh, no observer, but he's he's able to clean up the lurkers with the storm instead. Yeah, actually, Dogliv gets away with like some of his army actually. So I mean, not yeah. uh, not too bad. He could have been a lot worse. Like he could have lost like everything there, right? Uh, but yeah, definitely. Definitely good for Dibutis. Definitely. An Ultralist Cavern already finished here from Dogliv's side. We have an excellent program coming out from Dibuti. He's up to 72 on three bases. So if he's able to establish a fourth base very, very soon, uh, the game still is in his hands. But it looks like Doglift is looking very, very comfortable at the moment. Yeah, he's got a healthy uh, healthy supply lead. Uh, anytime the Zerg is ahead in Zerg versus Protoss and supply-wise, you know you're in trouble. But Dibuti's is well mm. ahead in supply, so he's... Uh... Yeah, he's, he's definitely. The booties is preparing for his fourth base on the bottom as well. Yeah, he's, he's definitely he's still in this. Um, this game could still go either way. Uh, the Zerg late game against Protoss is it's really hard to play against Protoss. Definitely. Um, mm, once you get definitely. that crack upgrade, like the, the Zergling oh, like the attack crackling. speed, yeah, the crackling. You know, it's it's really it's t it's really tough for Protoss to deal with. Uh, but uh, so I wonder if we're actually going to be able to see Ultras this game. You don't get to see uh, the game going into this situation where. The Zerg is able to get Ur uh, Ultralis tech. But, okay, we'll see if uh, this push is able to do anything from Dibutis. He's actually filtering a couple of units, okay? He's regrouping them now. He has a decent amount of Zealots and Goons, and his Templar count is at four, so he should be able to have six or eight Storms. Yeah. Uh, he's electing to back off at the moment. Yeah, just some uh, army posturing, right? Trying to zone out some territory yeah. in the map. Uh... I mean, he's I like away completely with this base as well. No, sorry, go ahead. I like this base here, but how is he ever gonna like main hard to post? I, well, I guess they can come down this channel here. Like, hmm. I'm just gonna get the pros to uh, to his base. So the is gonna actually catch half of Doglib's army here. He's, he can definitely take this fight with a couple good storms. And he's just gonna mow through this positioning that Doglib had. This is one of the things that is really difficult playing Zerg is. Uh, there's no way you can have all of your armies on hockey and be producing all your hatcheries at the same time because you don't get enough camera hotkeys or any army hotkeys. So this is a really difficult time for uh, Doglib. Even though it looks good for him, it's up to his control whether he can make it happen. Right. So we might see a, a push uh, against the mate from uh, the booties. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's grouping up his army. Okay. Definitely 200, 200. Definitely a good time to push. Army's not yeah, gonna get stronger than this. Okay, army's not gonna okay, get more powerful. I think he actually will be able to push through here. These lurkers are completely undefended. Really nice storm on the bottom here. We should be seeing a couple more storms on top of these hydras. And Doglib needs to desperately try to reinforce. Oh, really excellent storm in the main army there. This army is gonna get gobbled up by the beauties, and we'll see where he can transition from here. Yeah, and so, the Ultralist tech actually not being used at all yet. Um, he has one Ultralist, but the natural. Yeah. Just Almost the one, doesn't have Ultra Speed either, and speed he's filtering in units now. Oh, this is looking quite bad for Dogmoon. He had the upper hand in the mid game, but wasn't able to transition in properly. I think just going for a standard Defiler play would have been better rather than going for Ultralist. Yeah, Defiler, Mass Crackling, right? Lurker, like massive Lurker field. Mm. Right. The plague is really, really nice in yeah. PvZ as well. That's what Protoss is afraid of. The damage is permanent. Yeah, that's what Protoss yeah. is afraid of. Like the mass lurker with the with the swarm and then with the plague rate, right? <laughs> and then the, and then like lings, like the like groups of lings sending like coming everywhere. Yeah, just one thing I want to point out here on the fourth base of the booties, he's building that uh, robo, and he should be seeing a support bay as well, which I really love. I love when Protoss players build extra robos on their outer bases, just to be able to make weavers or observers when they want to.
good counter from uh, Doglift, 9 to 12 o'clock. Mm. Yeah, just with four links as well. Yeah. Killed the Nexus actually, I saw it earlier. Oh really? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I missed that. It was warping in. Yeah, these Cracklings, man, they're so good at like taking out buildings. And he's got 3-2 on them, right? Like They're basically Cracklings now. He's yeah. missing one, uh, one upgrade, yeah, it's on its way. Plus three on an attack. Okay, a good amount of Ultra is coming out. And it's actually building... Is that a Queen? No, it is a Defiler Man coming down as well. So there is a little bit of time before that gets up. So we'll see if Doglift is able to survive until then. Because Tabooties is maxed out, but he's not able to actually push to any locations quite yet. And he hasn't been able to take a Fist Nexus as well. He's going to take it now. And I would... Actually, he would be able to take two bases at the same time if he wants to, since his army is quite formidable. I think you should take bottom right, if anything. Right? Yeah, it, definitely. It's easier to hold. Um, we see a huge attack from Doglib. Army is again split up, though. It's piecemeal, you know? Like, he's got an army in the middle of Yeah. Map. But it is a good amount of Oshalus, which can fight some of this army, but it doesn't look like it's quite enough. He uh, needs to attack together. Well. It's a little bit late, but he, the rest of his army coming out from Doglib, you can see how difficult it is to control for these Zerg army units. But yeah. I think Dibuti is going to clean up. Yeah, it's gonna clean it up. Um, you you really gotta attack together, right? It's gotta it's gotta come together at the same time. Again, I know it's hard, right? Like you were saying, you know, you gotta be really quick. Like you gotta like drag select really quickly. Just, yeah, there's just not enough hotkeys for the um, for Zerg. Yeah, and this is why Action is one of those great PVZ players because he's late game control of Zerg enemy. Honestly, it, it feels like he has six hands, like when he's six controlling hands. all the Zerg units. Two keyboards, right? Two rows of like, yeah. Two hotkeys. keyboards, six hands. He's controlling his overlords with his nose. Like it doesn't make any sense how he's able to control all of his army. Okay, now we see a big attack at the six o'clock. Reavers are coming out, oh, but they're not done yet. Look at that. Looks like he's going to be able to bust through if he's able to get those units up there. Move the hydras. Oh, the hydras body blocking the the ultralist. Yeah. Okay, he is going to eventually get up there and take out the fourth base, but um, this is starting to look a little bit poor for Dibuzi. He does have a good bank, which is excellent, but it would be nicer if he has some extra bases instead. Yeah, the bottom right base. If he had the bottom right, it would be amazing as well. Uh, mm, definitely. Yeah. And again, I said that the, re uh, the, the Robo play is excellent, but his reverse was just out just a little bit too slow, I think. If they were there, I think the Reaver could have definitely hold uh, enough time for those him to reinforce and save the base instead. Well, uh, uh, Dibutis is not out of this yet, though. I just want to like point out, Dog lived. He never got a fifth base, so he's actually running low himself as well. Mm. Like, yes. Uh, Zerg will mine out as well, and uh, Dibutis he's got another base up, which is good. Uh, one more base, and he can really, really like uh, continue the game. Yeah. yeah. Looks like uh, Dibutis is low, running uh, low on gas a lot now. Yeah, gas um, essential. I think this one's depleted. Yeah, the main is depleted, but the other ones are still doing fine. Oh, actually, the natural, he's only got one on gas and a natural. Like, we, 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 got oh. we got to get those gas saturated. Yeah, he definitely needs to fix that right away. Yeah. Okay, we see a couple Dark Archons coming out as well, in case there's, uh, in preparation, sorry, for those Defilers as well. Oh, we saw the Defiler Mount go down, but none of the Defilers have actually built quite yet. It could be for Maelstrom actually, as well. Mm, yes, definitely. Does Maelstrom work on Australisks? Yes, it works on all biological right? units. Yeah, oh, they actually, these DTs are gonna save... I kill all of these units because we see no overlords here from uh, Doglu. Yeah, this is Taking crazy. Like, so many Dark just... Templars. Yeah. Wow, Dibuti is really with a nice um, army composition really here. You can see there's like six or seven different types of units in this large army. Yeah, I've missing... got a team of units here. Yeah, yeah. You ever see arbiters in like late game PVZ? Like very rarely, right? But you, <laughs> you think mm, it would very be good. rarely. But I think they are quite useful in PVZ. Yeah, I think the stasis, I think... right? Yeah, I think the problem is is um, the tech transition. You know, you gotta spend the gas. You would rather spend it on ten plus and uh, archons and dark archons rather than taking up the arbiters. I think it's yeah, it's very gas intensive. Players, uh, opinion. Uh, it's very gas intensive for sure. Mm. Look at that! Look at that! Uh, oh, Maelstrom. Maelstrom on the three drones with this dark icon. Uh, very no, fun. No, uh, no, no storm to to back it up though. Like, 
the storm on top okay, of the beautiful. Okay, the temples are coming down now. We should be seeing uh, one really nice storm there. We should be seeing a second storm come down. Okay, really nicely on top of this ultralist as well. Oh, wow. he's able to get all these defilers before they spend any of their energy. Or if he's able to just A move down there, there's two defilers for free. Oh, he just didn't pay enough attention. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that, that was a good attack, you know, perfect. keeping the Zerg off double gases as well. That's really mm, good. Definitely. Is, there, is he gonna try oh, to go for a counter or something? Like... Yeah, Dogliv actually getting into a good position here. With these cracklings, they can actually start to fight the Archons now. Yeah, that's crazy. Before they would have just been peaceful, but now they can actually fight. Oh, look at that storm oh, though. Really excellent storm there, saving all those, killing all those links. Uh, Dogliv is actually gonna get in, but it doesn't look like he's gonna get too much damage done quite yet. Yeah, like the flood of reinforcements coming out of the booties will clean it up. No problem. Yeah, dog lift. Okay, let's uh, take the economy for Zerg. So Zerg is running out of minerals here, running out of gas here as well. This one's already depleted. So Zerg is actually on one mining base. Yeah, yeah, the, the booties, and he's also the booties is also getting another base. I mean, Zerg's getting another base as well, but uh, like at, at this point, I think I think the Protoss will outlast the Zerg, right? Mm, definitely. And Dogliv is actually out on the bank. He's spent all of his money on the Ultralisks. Which again, a bit of a questionable decision from him. If he just stuck with Ling Lurker, Defiler, with Hydralisks as well, I think he would have been in a much better position. Yeah. Because his high tech was quite early. Right, I mean, it's not like you can't use Ultralisks. I've seen Ultra Ling as well and Defiler um, against like, Protoss, but... Uh... Like, it, it, you can you can make it work as well, right? I, I just don't think it worked out yeah. in this uh, scenario, right? No, just not in this scenario. I think um, the booties had a good response making a lot of, lot of Archons. Um, and he had some really good storms. And Dog Liv's execution on the attacks, they weren't perfect. They were okay. But again, it's really, really difficult to control a large Zerg army. Right, yeah. Yeah, the booties is going to max out again pretty soon. He's got another base, and it's just finished. And he's looking in a great position now. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think the Zerg has, like I, okay, again, I don't want to call it, but I, I, I think, oh, actually, hold that thought. Look at these probes. They're gonna get intercepted by the Zerg army. Are they? Gonna... Oh, okay. This is gonna be really excellent if he gets all these probes. But the armor is here to protect them. But we'll see how the fight goes now. We can see the Archons in the back, which is not where you want them. These zealots are gonna get killed first. These. Storms are okay, but this Defiler needs to cast something, either Dark Swarm, okay, Dark Swarm is okay, but not really the great... Plague you really want to see this Plague better. coming down instead. Yeah, and Dogliv taps out as a GG. Yeah, good game from... from, uh, from... I think really excellent play from the booties. He was down early a little bit, but was able to bring it back. With an excellent micro, getting his bases up correctly. Yeah, that, that was well played by uh, the BDs. Mm -hmm. That that was a really like standard like PBZ, and uh, you know that was it was nice to watch. Yeah. You know. Other than the Ultralist, I think I think again I would um would have advised Donglev to go to Fires, but again maybe he, uh, Ultralist tech works in a lot of games for him instead. So this will be the last game, by the way. Yeah, and the last game of today is going to be in the top right. We have the booties in the Protoss blue. And in the bottom left corner, we have Neon Sword. So, lots of PVTs today. We'll see another different flavor of PVT again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see uh, if... So no, yeah, I was just going to say, like, let's see if Neon Sword will buck the trend uh, and, you know, try to play, like, a 2-1 flash style with the third base uh, instead of just two base pushes. Mm. Uh, I, I I don't I blame... In this position, really difficult to do yeah. an Eclipse, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, I don't blame these Terrans for going two base, though. It's just the nature of the map, you know, and uh, yeah, that makes it kind of bad. Well, well, one thing I've noticed about Terran uh, these days, the meta is this, okay? There's only usually two builds I see uh, from a lot of the, even the pro gamers. Okay, uh, they they usually only go uh, like you know fact CC fact that kind of tank like push right, and if it does damage, then they'll do like a two two base push. Uh, if it doesn't, then they'll go into like three base flash. And the other only other build I really see like these days is that you go factory command center and then starport, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, starport build, yeah, very very popular. 
Yeah, very popular these days. Very, very popular. Dabuti is actually scouting his own main just to see if there's any shenanigans going on, and then he's going to send the scout up to the kingdom. Yeah. A uh, little bit of wall coming out from Neon Sword yet again. Yeah. No, I mean that. I think that's a little early. I don't. I don't think. I don't think Terence will ever try to like build a barrack in your base on Eclipse no, at yeah. that timing, right? Maybe BBS. It may, on it may have map. just been a misclick as well. Yeah. True. Yeah. This this will be tight, right? If he puts another depot on top. I think so. Yeah, it will be tight. So. It's not, not having to worry uh, about Mar anything. Mars says hi. Sure. Mars says hello. And oh, Merry Christmas. Mars. Yeah, Merry Christmas, yeah. everybody. Uh, for some of us, I think it's Christmas Eve, but for me, actually, it's Christmas Day. No. Alright. And yeah. actually, Dibuti is coming in here. He could elect to mess up this wall with a pylon if he wanted to, but he elects not to. And actually, Neon's so playing it safe. Uh, getting the supply down first and then finishing his racks there. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, both players scouting each other's base. Mm. Okay. I think these two players are more of a um, more of a gateway style standard player from uh, the booties and also Neon Sword. Mm, haven't seen a PVT from him today, I think, so hard to say. But I don't think we'll be able to see any uh, Reaver or Carrier fanciness coming out from the Booties today. That was all depleted from Chill. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like the Booties gonna see everything, man. He he sees like he sees the pull off the gas, the one on gas. He sees so it's not gonna be like two factory or anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, like Neon Sword also sees basically everything. Um, he sees the one gate. Yeah. I mean, he sees the, he the double pylons. He should be leaving now, I think. Right. Yeah. Oh. He's gonna lose the SCV, I think, unless he's able to save it. If he leaves now, he can still save it. Yeah. I'm. I'm. But he might not be able to get a poke in at the 420 next time. Right. So go ahead. No, no. I'm just saying. Like, um, I, I know that there's some builds actually with Protoss. You can actually take off like one of your pros with gas to get a little bit more money or faster nexus and all that. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I just I haven't seen any Protoss do it uh, like today. But I. Uh, yeah. I, I was wondering, like, do, do you know anything about that? Like, do you know the builds? Like you, have you heard of that before? I think, mm, no, I haven't heard of anything like that, but... Yeah. Oh, taking gas on the Proto side. Yeah, I've, I've heard of that But it looks cause... like the booty is actually really high in gas for some reason. I'm not sure where his economy went wrong, but... Well, well no, no, I, I don't think it, it really went wrong. It's just that, like, um... Yeah, like, if you keep three on gas, like, right after 12 gas, like, you do accumulate a lot of gas, right? So... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we got high ground command center. Um, well, I mean, not not a bad choice because he's he's neglected to make um, any bunker, right? So it's much more safer to get the command center on high ground. Yeah. Siege mode, obviously, right? Must if you're not going to have anything to protect the front. Um, I mean, you, I guess you could go mine first, but like there there is it is dangerous. Like there's a timing where the protoss can come in with dragoons. Your mines are done. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you see slight, subtle differences between the players here where um, Crazy has that really nice on top of control with the SCV scouting, but uh, Neon Sword slipping just a little bit. He still doesn't know if there's a Nexus or, four, or like three gateways coming, but he hasn't been able to get any scout information, so he does go for the Siege Expand. Right, yeah. Siege Expand, like one of the most safest like expansion uh, builds you can do against uh, Protoss, yeah. but at the same time though, like. It's 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 also kind of like the worst because it affords you no map control, no map map vision, right? With the vulture, mm -hmm. uh, vulture you can also put my oh dude, look at this pro man! Like he he's, he found that like oh look at this marine actually like it's, he found the probe. I think the probe is gonna build a third down here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but then marine. <laughs> I like think united. it's a bit of a coincidence. I think Neo sort of forgot about his marine and it was just following the pro probe around. <laughs> Yeah, like the scouting one or something, right? Oh, well, he has one. Yeah, uh, that, that might have been the scouting probe. Mm. Um, this might be a second probe coming out. It's gonna get blasted yeah, in there. See the siege. It's gonna be Should be seeing a third base coming out immediately from the booties. If he sees its siege expand, then you can just take a third base as a Protoss player very competently. Yeah, the booties playing super safe. Like, look, look at this triple gate robo observatory. Mm. Like, this is as safe as you're gonna get. As a this is not really gonna pay off, I think. I think early on, I think you can still get the uh, 
early third base if you see a siege expand. So the response, just not ideal, but still uh, not a bad game coming out from Debris. Yeah, he's just playing super safe. Uh, I definitely agree, though. He, I mean, he should have taken the third ASAP, right? When he like once he saw like, the siege mode coming up. Um, looks like he's gonna posh some goons, probably to try to catch. Ooh, gotta be careful. Oh, careful. okay. Taking some hull damage. Losing, uh, yeah, losing hull damage is not very great, especially if there's any inkling of a push coming out from Neon Sword. Neon Sword floating a little bit of minerals. He needs to decide if he wants to CC or if he wants four factories very soon. Yeah, he, he's um, he's also stopped SCV production as natural. Really, it's not really good, and his his armory is late. If you you know like if you're gonna like you want to get your upgrades right as fast as possible, it's tearing. Mm. But, uh, he's got double gas already, but no no armory or like maybe it's under the map. I don't know. Okay, now it's not there. Okay, so yeah, he's 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 got to do something with his money. Looks like he is gonna do expansion. Yeah, it's gonna be expansion. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a CC at the top of this plane. And yeah. it looks like we can see the anti-DT turret coming out again, Shroom. Yeah, <laughs> I mean... I every, mean... <laughs> almost every PVT today, once they didn't get a scout off, they just get an anti-DT turret. Well, you, you kind of have to, though, because, like, what if they did go DT, right? Like, you're playing with fire, yeah, like, I mean, you, you don't get it. If it is a best of one, I do understand. But I think, like, I'm of the opinion that if I... I don't have any information, don't have any hints that it's DT and I die to DT, then I just die. Then I'm okay with that. But I don't know, some people might feel differently. Right. And uh, I don't know if Neon Sword, he, I think I think he forgot. Like, look, he's making four factories now, but he had one SCV. I think he was planning to go like third, but maybe he mm -hmm. changed his mind because now he's going four factory. Yeah, uh, the armory is almost done now as well. I think uh, he's. Trying to do some kind of timing push, but it, again, it's um, as you said, it's quite late, it's quite delayed. Yeah, I I really think it, it's it's almost like he was gonna go for a third, but then like he changed his mind and then you know, now he's gonna go for like a time. It looks push. like he's gonna get a position out on the map now. He has a very healthy tank count, but his factory count is not very high. And if there's gonna be zealot legs coming out, which it almost is done, the next round of zealots, if he does push out too quickly, can take this fight out. Yeah. Dubuti is like two base arbiter. Look at that. Oh, two base arbiter. Two base arbiter. <laughs> a five factory timing would have been a correct counter, but it looks like everything is slightly delayed from Neon Sword. He's scanning around for if there's any third bases around. So if you don't see the third base coming, you should scan the main and see if it's a carrier or arbiter tech. But he doesn't know if it's either of them quite yet. Yeah. Big factory is going down, it, so it is the correct build, but everything's just a little bit delayed, fortunately. Yeah, and uh, I and actually I don't think he's gonna actually do like a five factory timing more. Man, it looks like he's setting up to take a third. You know, it looks like he's just going five factories into a third. Um... Yeah, just my concern is his. I'm not sure if he meant to start this easy. I think you're right. I think he was supposed to start this easy. He just slipped. Or like maybe like he got there and then he built something and he didn't build, right? And then he's like, yeah, he just kept, didn't I notice. Think that's my what happened. Yeah, uh, this this is not this is not good because he's got no tech as well, like no starport, no anything, right? Like this two base armor mm. is gonna come out and hit him like a sledgehammer, you know? Okay, the scan goes down on the natural. So if he sees the temple archives, you can very well guess that it is two base arbiter as well. So let's see if he throws down a starport in preparation for his push. Yeah, the armory is halfway once done he gets already. There and if an arbiter is already done, you're not going to be very happy. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, if you're going like the standard like three base, like look look that look the timing on attack, right? Like you want to get your, you want already have started your starport you know, by the time. Yeah. yeah it's, I I don't I don't really know what this build is coming out from Neon's like Neon Sword. Okay, like Neon Sword is doing getting the starport down now. I think he does want to kill the game soon, but he's just really, really late on his push. But we'll see if it pays off because he has a really high tank count, but not a lot of vultures. So these zealots can do a lot of good damage. And actually, he's going to pull the trigger now with the booties. He's going to get on top of these tanks. He needs to move these dragoons down to actually do some damage. But none of these tanks are siege, so they're going to get a good fight on these zealots right now. And the booty is actually going to back off against. 12 tanks right now. This is a lot of tanks. So Neon Sword actually can get some good damage done since all of those Zealots did die for free. The Arbiter is out, so we'll take a look at the scan energy from Neon Sword, which is he has two scans banked up, so if the Booties is able to take this fight well, he can delay for extra gateway units. 
I kind of feel like uh, instead of attacking, the booty should have just waited for his arbiter, you know, right? Mm, definitely. Yeah, right. I agree. But I think he saw an opportunity because they were unseaged, but actually worked out well for Neon Sword at that time because the Zealots came in first and he was able to get all the Zealots. I think uh, Neon Sword is just going to take this position here and wait for his facility to be finished and get his first vessel for his push. Again, no third CC coming down from Neon Sword, so he is very committed to this push. Yeah, and he, he's got the facility down already, so he and the second uh, armory, so well, he's got to get the upgrade started. He's got to get that plus two started. Yeah, there's no point in having a second armory if your plus one is not even. Uh, plus two, two is not, not started. started. Yeah. He is going EMPs as well, so he looks like he does want to kill the push. Kill kill with a push, sorry, but everything just a little bit delayed, so it does give the booties a lot of room to prepare for this oncoming uh -oh. oh. Yeah, a bit of a leg. Oh, no, that's okay. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, look at this double Stargate from the booties, man. Like, can you, can you do four double Stargate on three gas when, when you got like all this tech upgrading? You know, like... I'm not sure about that one actually, but yeah. it looks like he wants to get extra arbiters out so he can get some good stasis going on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, mm. like more more arbiters is never a bad thing, but I mean, I kind of feel like if, if you know a push is coming, wouldn't you want to invest more in just like gates and stuff? And hmm. he does have the correct amount of gateways, which is the eight gateways. So maybe he feels that he doesn't need extra gateways. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Um, so I guess there's two paths. You can either go for the extra arbiters or the extra gateways, and he's chosen to go for extra arbiters this time. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think Neon Sword is gonna do push anymore. It looks like he's just gonna camp the high ground, man. Like, look, he's, he's gonna take a third. You can see he's yeah pushing a ton of units. It's gonna up be here. quite a late third, but um, a third anyways. Yeah. But a very very safe third, I well, guess you could say. <laughs> I I don't even know, man. Like he, I mean, there, there's no recall defense whatsoever, right? Um, oh, the booties has like. Yes, you're right. Observers in like in Neon's like main, so he knows everything. And even look at like the big army here, like it's pretty clumped up. Well, it was clumped up. Like one flyby, well he's re-sieging with one flyby with the stasis, you get a massive amount of tanks. Yeah, I like, think definitely Neon Sword had a timing when his vessel came out to try to attack the booties. You can see tons of scans going down. He does see the force base coming down from uh, the booties. So we'll see what he wants to do in response to that. Yeah. The booties has recall, right? I mean, I think he does. I think he did stasis first because and then of the recall. push, and then recall. I'm not sure. I didn't quite catch if he did get recall or not. I'm pretty sure he but does because he got um, energy, right? Because he would get like stasis, recall, then energy, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, one of the things you can do with uh, your arbiters, if you're not, if if you know there's not going to be any push, which it does seem like there's no push, you can just leave one of your arbiters down at the six o'clock location, in preparation for a recall. And it looks like he's splitting off one of his arbiters as we speak right now. Yeah. One of the higher energy ones. Oh, maybe this is EMP like anti EMP placement, right? Mm, that could be as well. Yeah, and uh, Neon Sword again. He he forgot the upgrades, man. Armory's not oh. spinning. Stuck on plus one. That 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 could be a game changer. <laughs> That is a game changer, I think, yeah. yeah. The difference yeah, between yeah. like plus two like mech and like plus one mech is, is already pretty good. Like two one is like yeah. so much better than one zero, right? And three two is when your mech is like invincible. And actually Protoss is gonna get ahead in upgrades, which is not a sight that you see very often in this matchup. Yeah, for sure. I don't know, like but I Neo Sword is able to establish his locations and get his third base up, so He's going to be on a decent economy back again. You can see his gas count is very low because he didn't get to have his third gas until now. Right. And he is even supply against Protoss, which is good for him. But uh, mm. I just feel like like a couple good recalls could have like could end this game. You know? But uh, it, it seems no, like definitely. the booties is going to make yeah. attack. Ooh, this attack is really destroyed. Oh, this attack is not going to be... Okay, really nicely backed off at yeah. the correct timing there by Dewey. Uh, plus two attack from Terran side is starting now. Actually, recall wasn't done as we expected, and the recall is about to finish very, very soon. It's dead. I think so one of the Ar... Like Dewey is now thinking about recalls now. I think one of the Arbiters got EMP'd. See the shields and energy is depleted. Oh, no, yeah. I think, I think um, it was when the vessel... Uh, flew across and took a lot of damage, but 
Yeah, I think it's a kid in the MPL. I think you're yeah. right. Good, um, good response by Neon Neon Sword, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, I think Neon yeah, as Sword. As you said, I think a couple recalls or some good stasis can kill this game. Oh, but not like this if he's filtering in units. Oh, he needs this... to be very careful with his armor control right now. Oh, he's gonna lose a lot of these dragoons if he doesn't maintain them. Oh, yeah, that, that's pretty okay, huge. Neon Sword actually getting some good fights. Yeah, he bled a lot of units. Um, I think at this point though, Neon Sword, I. He's, like, he should just play for like split map, man. You know, he should just play for bases. Like, take a fourth, take a fifth, and like defend, right? Yeah, I like, agree. He, Definitely. His, his timing window is kind of over, but um, yeah, he's he's lost any timing that he had made for himself. But right, yeah, especially uh, okay. At least now we, we see plus two going, but the plus one armor is not going as well. And plus one armor is really really huge too. I'm not exactly sure, but I think plus one armor allows your tanks to say, take one more hit in the dragoons, right? like one more. Mm. So that's pretty huge, you know. That could be different difference between one more volley, right? Yeah. And I think the Brutus is just worried about a brief push coming, which is why he's keeping his army together. I think um, if he realized the situation he's in, which is that Neon Sword wants to play defense, he would have done a couple recalls. But I think he's just worried that a brief push might come. So he's just keeping all of his army units together. And actually, Neon Sword is actually going to push up through the middle of the map now. Ooh, good oh, EMP. great EMP on one of the Arbiters. Okay, but there's two more Arbiters still with energy. Decent uh, stasis getting two tanks. Not that good. It's kind of formed a wall as well. But the mines, my tanks on top of the mines, that was huge. Oh, mine drag with the zealots. Remember remember what Nablime says, man? Like, tanks on mines? Oh, say, oh wait. Was it mines on tanks? <laughs> Proda says thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nablime with his, the with his yeah. rhymes. Nablime's rhymes. <laughs> Okay, uh, you can see after that fight, Neon Sword actually going down to 100 supplies. So this is going to be a really, really long road for Neon Sword to come back into this game. And this Arbiter is actually going to get some free kills on these tanks. Yeah, uh, he he has a lot of money, but like a large bank. But without a fourth, he will mine out, right? Like mm, the booty's got the entire map. And yeah, this is looking really, really grim for the Protoss. I mean, for the Terran. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think Djibouti can just push through uh, these three tanks and take the game as well. Yeah. See if he elects to do that. Looks like he's just gonna do just that, as you, as you were saying. Yeah. Like, Protoss has an overwhelming army at this point. Um, yeah. yeah uh, Un unfortunate for Neo Sword, I think he had a couple timings earlier on in the game, but he elected not to take them. His third CC was very, very delayed. He was able to get a big army, but his fight was just not taken very well. Well, yeah, but the, the, the thing is, like, even if Neon Sword had amazing fights, just by the nature that, like, the booties has, like, the entire map, you know, and I don't think he would have been able to really, like, make a comeback. Maybe if, if he managed to cap the main, you know what I mean? Because, like, the booties yeah. doesn't have gates somewhere, but that, that that's a that's a big, that's a really tall order, you know, <laughs> given yeah. the state of the game. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah, and I, I think we're seeing the beginning of the end. Um, yeah. A bit unfortunate for Neon Sword. I think uh, if he focused a little bit more on his money spending, he definitely could have uh, been in a better position. Yeah, and uh, really nicely played from Djibouti is taking all of the expansions. As soon as he feels comfortable in this game, he just takes all of the expansions that he wants to. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think, I think a more, more decisive play from both players would have been better. Like Neon, it kind of seemed like he, he wanted to do a five pack or like a expand, but then he didn't do it. Then he went a five pack, but then he didn't push. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, caught between a couple decisions. I think. Yeah, yeah. Like, as you said, I think if the booties was more aggressive with uh, uh, recalls, then he could have won the game earlier as well. Right. Well, I mean, there, there's no, there's no, um, there's no pressure to like to also recall in the sense that like mm. if if you know your head, like like uh, like just just get more head. <laughs> you don't have to gamble yeah. it. Because so, like, I guess it wouldn't really be a gamble though, because like the booties does have the revision, so he knows like uh, like there's nothing defending the on space. Like, yeah. let's say if you went in there blind and your entire army died to, like, mines, then the Terran can just immediately push across the map and capture me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... I mean, I mean, like, the booty's won, right? So, it, it, obviously, he, I mean, he, he did play a good game, I think, as well. Yeah, really, really he, he played the more, uh, better macro game. Yeah, than, he uh, played super standard, like, like the three-gate opening with the orbs and everything. That, that, that's pretty good, you know? Like, standard yeah. game is... Like, there's a reason why it's the standard, right? Mm -hmm. I think also um, he did a good he did a decent job delaying that first push as well, making the Neon Sword scared to push up 
uh, any further than the middle of the map. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In the first, yeah, the first fights. Yeah. Good posturing, good army control. Yeah. And then yeah, he had he had delayed enough time for the arbiters come out. And once the arbiters came out, Neon Sword was like, okay, no, I can't. I can't do this, I need to wait for my vessel. And that delayed his push again as well, and he eventually never pushed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he was also just trying to stay in this game uh, a little bit longer, just to see what he can get done with his army. And it, it is because it, he has the base. It is the best of one anyway, right? So might as well, like, that's why he's trying yeah. to stay in it. Honestly, I think uh, the beauties can at this stage can go mass arbiter and kill him with the auto attack from the arbiters instead. Not even <laughs> if Flash took over right now, I don't think even Flash could come back in this position. Mm, I don't know. He's pretty good. <laughs> no, you really think 3k bank, almost 4k <laughs> with 38 minutes. The Flash took over right oh, now. 15 SCVs. Yeah, I don't think I don't think uh, Flash can come back from 15 SCVs. Uh, oh, you can see he can try to he tried to stasis the ramp, but didn't quite get enough units to block it. Yeah, not sure. I don't think it matters too much though. His armory wasn't spinning the entire game. Yeah, the lack of upgrades also really hurt him. Like one of the most important things in TVP is the Terran upgrades. Right? Yeah. Right, so he's he's slowly trying to reestablish. His... <laughs> There's so many ice cubes. <laughs> oh wow, his whole army is like vast this. ice cubes coming out. Another wow. ice cube. And another one. Why, why are we in, still in this game? Okay, yeah, there we, we go. go. GG. GG. GG from the sword. Alright, yeah, um, yeah th thanks for watching. That was group uh, 42 for preseason. Oh, I think a very good set of games today. Yeah, definitely not bad. Got some good amount of standard games and good amount of tech heavy games, especially from Chu as well. Yeah. Uh, you have anything to say to, to see go? Um, no, just thanks for watching everyone and tune back in for the next preseason or for the regular season cast games since we'll be casting much more regularly this season. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Thanks, everyone. Uh, remember to follow and subscribe and follow the CPL channel as well. Okay? Yeah. Not this channel, the, the official CPL channel. That's what you're looking no, for. No, no, no. Subscribe to this channel. This channel is the... <laughs> No, okay, this first of all, more <laughs> I suck at streaming. The only reason why I did this is because the official CPL channel wasn't available, right? Usually you'd be on, you know, the official one and all that, right? So with yeah, all the that, that, that's overlays That's not the important one. The official channel is not important. This is the important one, everyone. Okay? This <laughs> always lose 1996. This is the good channel. Okay. Right. <laughs>